His Excellency Dr. Chaba Balo, Honorable Deputy State Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs dealing with Eastern Opening, uh, Excellency Ambassador, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, on behalf of the Embassy of India, let me extend a very warm welcome to all of you on this commercial seminar which is being organized in collaboration with Hungarian Chamber of Commerce and the Indo-Hungarian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, it had been quite some time since we last took stock of the developments uh, happening both in India, Indian economy, Indian budget has just been presented as also developments taking place in Hungary and bilateral relationship. We have a distinguished panel with us and we hope to have ideas thrown up for further collaboration to enhance the trade and investment relationship between the two countries. Uh, to begin with, I uh, request uh, Mr. Ambassador Balai Mishra to kindly give his opening remarks. Thank you very much. Distinguished guests, Chief Guest of this morning, Honorable Deputy State Secretary, the Honorable Vice President of the Hungarian Chamber of Commerce, the Honorable Member of Parliament and uh, President of the Indo-Hungarian Parliamentary Friendship Society, Mr. Peter Cherenis, who is most distinguished presence here, uh, distinguished guests, members of the industry, distinguished friends of ours, people who are interested in knowing about India, about the latest India. Thank you all. Welcome to you all. Good morning. As my colleague just opened the discussion saying that we are a very busy day today, uh, it takes you one after another, the presentations. Uh, by a very uh, senior, distinguished, important people, and I know many of you have come representing various sectors in Hungary. And all of you have come because you have some or the other interest in India. And today's India can fulfill any interest of any industrial group, any entrepreneurial group, any manufacturing group, any services group, which you can think of. We have been having our uh, bilateral relations with Hungary even before Hungary became independent. Right from the time, even before, in the Soviet days, we had a roaring bilateral trade relationship with Hungary at the time. Many of you would recall that, that our trade was much higher than what it is today. But unfortunately, with this big watershed period in history, the 90s, Trade fell very substantially between our two countries and we are still trying to pick up the trade and my figures, the figures which we will give to you is not very, very, very attractive. The figures are basically stagnating at 600 million US dollars, our bilateral trade figures, which is very inconsequential for a country of India's size or for a potential country of Hungary's size. We need to have more. We need to put our heads together to think how we can generate more trade between our two countries given the vast potential which exists. I was just going through our trade areas, areas of our trade. Many of our trade areas are overlapping between each other. For example, uh, uh, parts, engineering parts, chemicals. We are exporting chemicals to you, you are exporting chemicals to us. We are exporting engineering parts to you, you are exporting engineering parts to you. In other words, there is no growth in the trade basket which we need to do because today India is emerging in a very big way in the world. And let me start by telling you that the Asian Development Bank, somewhat like uh, one of the nodal banks of the region in Asia, somewhat like the IMF you can say, has predicted that given our growth trajectory now in India, which is around 7.4% uh, the GDP 
per capita growth of India is now 7.4 percent. It is just behind China. ADB has predicted that in the next year, which is 2015-16, we will exceed China's growth and go beyond with 7.8 percent growth. So it just says the immense capacity and the potential which India is generating in the world today, which <coughs> makes India the most attractive destination from all accounts. You can take any angle and anywhere you can think of that to go to India and make business there, India is a lucrative destination, without doubt. Our Prime Minister has come out with a lot of schemes today. Our new Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, he's got several schemes which he has already launched in India. For example, Make in India scheme, which is the most attractive scheme of all the schemes, which is to give invitation to any manufacturer or any entrepreneur or any other person who would like to come and make things in India and then take it out. Either you sell it in India because India is a large market. You have a population of 1.3 billion people today in India with a middle class consumer market of about 400 to 450 million people of consumer class in India. That gobbles up a lot of your manufacturing production in India itself. So you will get a ready market within India. And thereafter you can take to any part of the world without any problem. There are a host of incentives which are given for any entrepreneur who is coming to India to prepare anything in India and we in the embassy are always ready to be at their disposal. To help them and we can handhold them from here, from Budapest, right up to India, any point in India where you can put up your unit without any problem at all. In fact, today the news I was reading was that Prime Minister himself has uh, brought uh, under his own control a wing which is called the Trade and Investment Wing of the Prime Minister's office. It's called Pragati. Pragati means progress. And he is now going to review week after week the progress is what is coming into India, how things are getting done, is there any delay on part of anybody. So he is directly going to intervene. So there is a direct intervention on the part of our uh, state at the highest level for any kind of preparation which you can put to invite foreign entrepreneurs, manufacturers or any other people. Look at the vast potential which both our countries have. It can range from science and technology, innovation, to culture, to tourism, to people-to-people -to -people connection, to any kind of cultural development because Hungarians by nature are interested in India. Look at India. They always look at India with something or the other. We have getting a kind of, a, uh, I won't say a very big increase, but certainly a considerable increase in tourism flow from Hungary to India. We are getting more tourists going to India and our tourism policy is very liberal and therefore we give visas without any problem to anybody who wants to go to India and therefore there is a lot of tourism now starting to move up up, and seeing for India not only for uh, cultural tourism but also for uh, uh, entrepreneurs, business people who can go and see what is going on in India. So today India is a happening place, is a happening country, it's a huge market, potential is tremendous and it is on the trajectory of a growth. And this growth will be sustained because we have a very big capacity. Our basic fundamentals, economic fundamentals are very strong. So we can absorb this growth. Unlike Europe which is happening, which is passing through a crisis period, we do not have that crisis period within us. We can always surmount any crisis which comes to us by virtue of our strong fundamentals which we have built over the years and we hope that this will sustain us for at least half a century from now on. So this is the time to come to India, to look at India and consider India as a big destination for you all. I know there is a lot of disposable capital in Hungary. There is a lot of, uh, I mean Hungary uh, thinks that it is now growing at a faster speed than in comparison to other uh, European countries and compared to other East European countries in particular. And you are emerging as an economic hub 
in the region because of your location, because of your connectivity, because of your skill availability, because of your multilinguistic uh, capabilities. All that makes Hungary regionally an important uh, center. And if you joined with India, which is today the most attractive center in that region, then the combination is formidable. You can think of any kind of combination which can come and I am sure the Honorable Deputy State Secretary will highlight some measures of what he deals with as a part of Eastern Opening. And Eastern Opening is an opening for the rest of the world from Hungary. And we take privilege that India finds uh, a great deal of uh, importance in the Eastern Opening uh, strategy of the government of Hungary. And we want to build on that, we want to consolidate on that. So with these opening remarks, I now invite the Deputy State Secretary to please come and say a few words on behalf of the government of Hungary, the policy aspects of what we can do for the, to move up. Let me tell you that today we have a number of our big companies here, uh, our own India, uh, Indian majors who are here and who have uh, invested both in terms of capital in, as well as uh, uh, you know, uh, human capital. Uh, they are bringing from India as well as recruiting your local people here. So they are uh, contributing very, very uh, strongly to your economy. And more and more Indian companies are poised to come and invest in Hungary. So it is going to be a, a huge business relationship between India and Hungary. And this is the most appropriate time. And uh, sometime later, Mr. Khanduja will also give his experiences. He's just recently back from a conference where he attended as a commercial representative for Hungary. So he will tell us about his experience about what are the new developments in India happening today. So with these words, I thank you ladies and gentlemen and we continue with the rest of the discussion. Enjoy. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Deputy Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear friends, uh, on behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, uh, I would like to thank you for this invitation uh, to say a couple of words about the uh, Hungarian-Indian relations and uh, the Eastern opening policy of the Hungarian government. I think uh, for everybody it's obvious uh, that uh, uh, the last uh, couple of years uh, Hungary was very much concentrating uh, to become uh, a, a full member of the European Union and uh, to be integrated in the, in the uni uh, European economies. But uh, after the joining the European Union we realized that uh, we lost a lot of our former connectivities or former cooperation potential with the rest of the world and the Hungarian economy became very much dependent only on the European uh, economic development. Uh, probably uh, most of you knows that uh, in 2010 80% of the Hungarian export uh, was realized uh, uh, with European Union member states, which is from one hand it's a very good thing, it speaks about the, the uh, uh, high level of, uh, uh, high level of uh, uh, value of the Hungarian products and uh, uh, our capability to, to work uh, in a very demanding market. But from the other hand, uh, it uh, created a situation in Hungary which uh, uh, created Hungary uh, in a very, uh, uh, put it in hung uh, Hungary in a very in the, uh, dependent uh, uh, situation. And at the time of the, uh, in the uh, time of the economical and financial crisis, mainly in Europe, we realized that we have to look uh, after uh, the other partners too. And that's why the Hungarian government announced the Eastern Opening Policy, looking for, uh, uh, for the centers of global growth and development. And one of the, those centers, one of the most important those centers, it's India. India for Hungary, it's a strategic partner and it's a promising uh, uh, partner. Uh, Mr. Ambassador uh, uh, said that uh, we are far to use all the possibilities of 
uh, Indian-Hungarian uh, cooperation. Uh, in the framework of the, the Eastern Opening Policy, uh, uh, we already realized a couple of changes of uh, 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 structure of the Hungarian foreign policy of state. One of the, the changes is happened inside in the ministerial structure and I think for uh, all the players on, on uh, foreign trade and economic cooperation this is a good news that uh, 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 all the instrument which has the Hungarian state related uh, the foreign uh, uh, commercial uh, activities and economic activities today is concentrated in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Uh, uh, we have the three major uh, uh, institutions which can help you uh, to, to work or in the Indian market or uh, to bring investment to Hungary. This is the Hungarian Investment Promotion Agency, which is working with the investment field, the Hungarian National Trade House, which uh, uh, meant to, to, to help mainly the <coughs> medium size and small size uh, companies to, to uh, uh, have some activities in the foreign markets. And the third one, which is also very important, the Exim Bank, uh, which coming uh, with the financing part of uh, that kind of activities. And you can find everything uh, of these institutions in the frame of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. And I think for the entrepreneurs, from practical point of view, it's a very easy and, and uh, convenient uh, uh, system. The other thing which we changed in the last uh, uh, couple of months and, and uh, uh, the system of our uh, foreign representation. Uh, it was a period of time on 2008-2011 when Hungary closed a lot of uh, foreign emb uh, embassies, uh, a lot of embassies for uh, representations in abroad. Uh, just now we go uh, uh, in the process of reopening uh, uh, these uh, representations and uh, we try to build up a new system of the local representation of the Hungarian national trade houses. Uh, it's already more than 25, it's opened all over the world and it's a very good news for uh, Indian-Hungarian uh, cooperation that uh, we will soon open a, a national trade house, local trade house in Bangalore in India. Uh, related with the official representations in the, of the government, it's also a very uh, important step in our relation that we opened the Consulate General in Mumbai. And it means that uh, we try to help our, our uh, 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 entrepreneurs to come back to the Indian market. I visited uh, 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 India this January. I was participating in a, in a seminar, uh, seminar in Jaipur. And I can tell you from my personal experience that uh, it's a great destination to do business. Uh, only uh, 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 the state of uh, Rajasthan, which I, I was visiting in, in the capital in Jaipur, uh, it's a huge possibility uh, for the Hungarian investments and uh, I think uh, uh, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a brilliant uh, possibility to make business together of, uh, with our in, in Indian partners, because Hungar Hungarian uh, companies are, are very rich uh, in ideas, uh, technologies, uh, knowledge, uh, uh, experiences in a different field like in biotechnology, infrastructure, uh, agricultural technologies, uh, uh, construction, and etc. And uh, definitely in India, you will find the dynamism which you need to expand uh, the activity of uh, your company. It's the same right, I think, for, uh, from the other hand, for the Indian inter entrepreneurs and companies. Uh, uh, you find here a very attractive uh, uh, business environment in Hungary, which, uh, with a relatively high growth in Europe, a safe economical uh, uh, environment, uh, 
and a very friendly uh, policy of the Hungarian government towards the investors, <coughs> towards the people who would like to bring production here in Hungary. I think this is, a, this is an important similarity of our uh, to, uh, uh, economic policies of the, the two governments, uh, because the, the uh, 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 Make in India uh, uh, program and the program of the Hungarian <coughs> government to bring the, the productive sectors of the economy here in Hungary, it's very similar. Uh, I think that uh, we have a lot of possibilities, we have a bright future. I think the two governments, it's tried to open all the doors uh, for, for, for the business people, but it's, of course it's your job to use these opportunities to, to make the business, make money, uh, for uh, and create a win-win situation for everybody, for the two governments, for the, the private entrepreneurs, and the, for the peoples of India and Hungary. Thank you very much. Excellency, Dr. Chaba Balog, for uh, succinctly giving an overview of uh, what is happening in India and what could be more done to enhance the bilateral relationship. <coughs> Uh, it's a very encouraging news that uh, the trading house is going to go to Bombay. You have uh, India on your radar to further enhance the relationship. I must also thank uh, Excellency Ambassador Mishra for giving an overview of uh, the vast gamut of our relationship. Coming from experience, it spoke about himself and, and about his ideas on how to grow the relationship further. I earlier mentioned we have a distinguished panel. I was being rather immodest and selfish because one of uh, the panelists is yours truly. <laughs> so I'll be giving a presentation on uh, the developments in the Indian economy. Thank you very much. So we just had the budget presented on 28th of February. Uh, those of you who don't know, our financial year starts from the 1st of April. The budget has just been passed. So before coming to the budget, I'll take you uh, through the broad contours of the Indian economy. Where do we stand and where do we go and what are the priorities? Uh, this shows, this slide shows the GDP, uh, uh, net GDP in terms of purchasing power parity, we are sixth. 0.7 trillion dollar economy, third largest in the world. The per capita uh, GDP is still low at 5,450 dollars. And uh, we've grown rapidly from the time we started liberalization process in 1991 when we were just about 200 million dollar economy. We've surpassed 2 trillion. 2 trillion in real terms, 6.7 in terms of purchasing power parity. So, uh, The service sector has grown rapidly from the time we liberalized in 1991. It now has 60% share in the overall GDP. However, the number of people it employs is still far less. It employs just about 25%. So that's where our priorities of uh, you know, giving a boost to the manufacturing sector comes in. Uh, we have a very young population. 50% of our population, almost 55% of our population is below the age of uh, 25 years and uh, the number of people that are aged 65% uh, uh, or older is just about 5%, the lowest in the world. It's likely to remain so till a very long time, till about 2050. Uh, middle class, as His Excellency mentioned, it numbers over 300 million and it's likely to double now in just about the next 10 years. So this is the phase when it's taking off. The, this, is, this represents the number of households, 60, uh, 61 uh, million households, which translates to about 300 million. In the world's largest democracy, uh, we had elections last year which threw up uh, stable government after two decades of coalition governments and the government is really business minded, business oriented and it's going full steam to reform the economy. They have majority in the Lok Sabha, the lower house and uh, not yet in the upper house but there has been cooperation from the opposition parties to pass uh, you know important bills 
recently we passed insurance bill, mines bill, coal bill. Uh, there has been opposition to one or two uh, policy measures, but the government is going ahead uh, really full steam with the reform process. Uh, this slide gives you an overview of the world GDP, which is just about 3.3%. The global GDP is growing at 3.3%, out of which emerging and developing economies are growing at 4.4%. Next year, they're likely to be 5%. But that's where India, India has just surpassed China, excellence, and contradicting uh, my own ambassador. But <laughs> uh, while the projection for China in uh, 2014 was 7.4%, they have clocked just about 7.1%, whereas India, where the projection was far lower, has managed to touch 7.4%, 7.5%. And next year, uh, we <coughs> intend to take it to anywhere between 8 and 8.5 percent. Let me clarify something here. This is on the basis of new series of GDP, which has uh, taken the base year as 2011-12. Earlier, the base year was 2004-05. So this has also made the difference, but this is in line with the practice being followed all over the world. We are now determining our GDP based on the market value of the products and not on factor costs, which was the case earlier. Uh, we have a stable environment which has led our Reserve Bank of India, the central bank, to ease the monetary policy. Uh, we had a very tight monetary policy because the inflation rate was very high. In the last about uh, nine months or so, the inflation has come down below 5%, which has led the RBI to ease uh, the repo rates twice in the month of January, as also recently on 4th of March, by 25 basic percentage points each. Uh, unleashing a vast uh, potential, a vast uh, uh, monetary value to the market which will boost uh, our growth. Fiscal deficit has been brought under control. You can see that it had touched a very high rate, uh, percentage of 6.5% in the year uh, just following the global economic meltdown in 2008. But this has been brought to 4.1%. We have a target of bringing it to 3% over the next three years. Uh, import and exports growth, they showed promising sign in the last uh, two quarters. Unfortunately, uh, the figures for the overall year are likely to remain as they were probably last year. There has not been much growth, but here, uh, not just the domestic factors, but the international factors are coming into play. Uh, we have most of the economies not growing. Uh, most of the economies where uh, you know our exports have been going are not uh, uh, growing to the extent we would have loved them to grow and that's where uh, our uh, current account deficit also remains at about 125 billion US dollars. Manufacturing is a area of concern. Uh, we have just about 14-15% um, in terms of manufacturing GDP which we want to grow to 25% or more because this would be in line with what the global trends are. We are a growing economy. We cannot sustain only on the basis of service sector. We have to grow our manufacturing sector because we have huge numbers which are coming uh, into, into the job market every year to the extent of 14-15 million people and to provide jobs it's not possible to just grow on the strength of either the agriculture or the services sector. And we have a huge demand. It's not just for exports. It's just to meet the domestic demand also because we are an economy, as Ambassador mentioned, which is being led by domestic demand. The growth is primarily because of domestic demand. We have significant potential of attracting more foreign direct investment. Uh, we've been attracting uh, on an average about 30 billion US dollars, which, uh, which is far below what countries of the comparable size or comparable economies have been attracting. This is a priority area on which the government is working. We have plan of major infrastructure development also in the 12th five year plan. We had projected a target of uh, 1 trillion worth of investment. Uh, 30 to 40 percent has already materialized but we need to gear up to make sure that by the time this plan period gets over we have full target into place. Now, this was the background of the economy, and now I come to the union budget. The thrust areas, of course, I took you to some of them, were agriculture income, which has been under stress. The focus is to increase that. That's one of the challenges of the union budget. 
increase investment in infrastructure, manufacturing, revive it. Uh, we have given more resources to the states. We've just now accepted recommendations of our finance commission because the states are now competing against one another. We are into what is being called competitive federalism. The states are competing with one another and that's where we have more devolution to the states. So the center has to look for more resources for itself and maintaining fiscal deficit. Uh, this has been a very growth oriented budget which takes a long term view. Normally we have budgets uh, which give figures for one year. In this budget most of the figures have covered a period of four to five years. I'll come to them, uh, them as we go along. The growth rate has been projected. I've already talked, talked about the fiscal deficit. One of the other things how to re uh, raise resources is through the disinvestment process. We have revised the target of disinvestment to 11 billion US dollar uh, in the last financial year, which is just ending now. The target has uh, been 5 billion US dollars. So almost doubling of the target and very important companies. Some of you uh, may have been dealing with these companies like ONGC, Trading Corporation, Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited, Indian Oil Corporation, National Aluminium Company, National Minerals Development Corporation. They are on the block. Uh, infrastructure major boost being given, having been given, uh, about 0.5% of the GDP has been allocated for roads, uh, ports and uh, road itself there has been an increase of 50% compared to what was last year. Uh, there has also been budgetary support to the railways. We have created a national investment and infrastructure fund. This fund is going to continuously have uh, uh, flow of 3.2 billion US dollar to invest in the equity of infrastructure companies. So you can see that it's a perpetual, going to be a perpetual fund, not just limited to one year, uh, to give boost to the infrastructure sector. Boost being given to the innovation sector. We have a new scheme in the name of our former Prime Minister, Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee. It's called Atal Innovation Mission. And we also have permitted tax-free infrastructure bonds for various infrastructure projects. Very ambitious objectives, as I said, five year period, power for all, enhancing coal output, doubling them. We have huge coal reserves, which we have not tapped. So the target is to take them to 1 billion ton per annum. That's also required to find, uh, to, to fire our uh, new ultra mega projects, which we have in the pipeline, each of 4,000 megawatt each, uh, which are going to be given on plug and play mode, which means the government is, of India is going to make sure that they are absolutely unencumbered. There is no obligation. You don't have to go run from department to department taking clearances. They are ready. I mean, you just have to start them. The target of renewable energy, a big thrust has been given. They have been made almost double. <coughs> just the solar uh, sector, we have increased the target from 20 gigawatts to 100 gigawatts by 2022. So a major thrust being given. Why I'm telling about these sectors is because at the back of my mind, I know that these are the potential areas where Indo-Hungarian co collaboration can come into play, whether it's infrastructure, smart cities, or, uh, you know, power sector. You know, some of you may be wondering, these are huge targets, where would small companies fit in? That's where a consortium approach could also pitch in, which means a few companies can get together, form a consortium and then go, rather than, you know, taking the plunge individually. Coming back to the tax proposals, I think the major, major announcement has been with respect to stable taxation policy. We are going to do away with the concept we brought in of retrospective taxation. So there is not going to be a retrospective taxation come what may. And implementation of goods and services tax, which means a host of taxes that the state governments were levying earlier are going to be done away with. There is going to be a uniform taxation. And this one measure itself is likely to have an impact on the GDP to the extent of increasing it by one, one to one and a half percent. There is a proposal to reduce corporate tax from 30% to 25% over the next four years, starting from the next financial year. So the roadmap has been laid. 
every year 1.25% of reduction in line and bringing the tax rates in line with uh, with what they are prevalent in most of the asian markets tourism major thrust being given visa on arrival facilities being extended skill india another major mission skilling in india we cannot have manufacturing without skilled manpower and it's not just the resources of the government of india it's also going to be the resources of the private sector which are going to make this happen a lot of outlay in both the education and in the skilling sector is brought by the private sector in india uh, of course government of india also has a plan uh, almost uh, half a billion us dollar has been allocated for various schemes a number of institutions of repute are going to be replicated so everything is there but uh, everybody's contribution is the key clean india initiative another big initiative which was launched on uh, 2nd october last year on the birth uh, 145th birth anniversary of father of our nation mahatma gandhi we have a five year plan on the 150th birth, birth anniversary we wish to see a clean india and major outlay from the government of india major budgetary support toilets for all whether be be the be these uh, uh, the households or the schools major initiative clean ganga 10 billion contribution from the center center is contributing 75% to 90% depending on the capacity of various states to contribute the rest is of course by the states and then uh, giving incentives for private sector participation or people participation because it provides for 100% deduction for contributions whatever you contribute your uh, you can take rebate clean energy cess has been levied uh, on the coal from rupees 100 it has been doubled this is likely to generate resources of 2 billion dollar per annum which would go to finance a number of uh, uh, clean energy projects something yeah digital india this one particular initiative uh, is designed in such a way that it brings any service uh, into the framework either it's available on cloud the idea is that whether it is business whether it is uh, a citizens uh, uh, you know whatever they have to get from the government all the entitlements are available to them on the net the human interface is eliminated it has been described as sweeping in its breadth inclusive in its depth and visionary in its height the aim is to transform india into becoming a digitally empowered society and uh, knowledge economy outlay is 19 billion uh, on this particular platform manufacturing clusters are going to be set up in various states uh, for electronics manufacturing chip units uh, the idea is by 2020 we have zero imports as far as electronics are concerned in the last particular one year when the fuel prices have come down uh, the current account deficit has not decreased it has remained at 125 billion us dollars primarily because of electronics imports and i'm talking mainly about the mobile telephones uh these are the nine pillars basically to just to give you an idea of covering everything yeah what would be the impact impact is that we are going to have broadband in 250000 uh villages which is 40% of the total villages that we have net zero imports as i said by 2020 4 lakh public internet access points digital inclusion this one initiative seeks to create about 100 million jobs which is the target for this government in the next 5 years this one initiative creates 17 million direct jobs and close to 85 million but through the multiplier effect as indirect and there is a lot for the industry because this government of india is going to provide enabling environment they are going to provide land they are going to provide physical infrastructure but it is the industry which is going to execute this program so a lot for the industry whether it is for skilling providing training providing broadband providing services make in india a signature campaign of prime minister modi what it seeks to do is revive the growth 
make an India part of the global supply chain. In this initiative, what is happening is everything, all the laws, acts, regulations, paperwork, you know, whatever returns required, they are all being reviewed. Everything, all the old archaic laws, they are being done away with. And India is being made business friendly. Everything is being put on the e-biz platform. Already, as far as the central government is concerned, uh, six departments uh, have been merged together and their requirements have been put on the EBIS platform, which means you don't have to run from, say, Ministry of Corporate Affairs to Ministry of Commerce, DIBB, Ministry of Finance. You know, you make one application, pay one time fee, and automatically it would get distributed. Uh, registrations, company registrations, 24 by 7 online availability. You can sitting at home, there's no human interface. So, all this is to make India more and more business friendly. The Prime Minister has repeatedly said that the goal is not to bring India's ranking down in the ease of doing business. We were at 134 position. He says the aim is to make India the easiest place to do business. Maximum liberalization. You know, uh, we have reformed uh, FDI norms in the insurance sector construction sector, railways, defense, most of these areas are not open in comparable economies. In India, we have maximum liberalization. There is probably not a single area where we have not liberalized. Uh, corruption, which was a big thing in the last about one year since the new government has come to power, the processes have been made so transparent, there has not been a whiff of corruption anywhere. These are the industrial corridors which are being developed. Uh, what had been happening was, till now the growth was mainly from the coastal areas. That was because it was easy to export or import goods into those areas. Uh, to give you one example, for goods to move from the northern part to the port on the western front, it would take 14 days. With the completion of Delhi, Mumbai Industrial Corridor, uh, for which the target is, is uh, 2017, it would take just about 14 hours. And all along these industrial corridors, we are going to have smart cities. Cities which are economically sustainable, which have centralized command systems, uh, whether it is electricity, whether it is the water, whether it is, you know, the transportation facilities, as you know in Budapest that the bus is coming in two minutes. These cities would provide, you know, all those type of services. Yeah, here uh, some of the cities where work is already, which has started, some of the cities which are at uh, planning stage or plans have been approved. Yeah, uh, Make in India campaign in any case is coming to Hanover for those of, wish, those of you who would wish to go to Hanover, uh, they may see India as a partner country at uh, this fair. Smart cities I already mentioned. The government has allocated uh, over 1 billion in this current budget. The aim is to develop 100 smart cities in the next 5 years. Not talking about a small number, 100 smart cities in the next 5 years. And for which a major initiative is that uh, FDI norms in the construction sector have been liberalized. I will take you through to some of these investments. In the last one year since the new government has come, the foreign policy has uh, really seen a big impact. A Prime Minister has invited uh, leaders from not just the South nations, a number of other leaders, President Obama has visited, Chinese President has visited, Russian President has visited, and a Prime Minister himself has gone to a number of countries. Japan has promised to invest $35 billion in various sectors. China has announced investments of about $20 billion, USA $4 billion, and another $42 billion by the private companies. Russia direct investment fund of 2 billion has been created and a number of pacts have been signed to relocate the defense manufacturing to India. Overall in the last about uh, uh, till uh, you know we have figures up to January there has been a 36% increase in actual FDI that has come to India. Yeah. Uh, Again, some of the sectors I've already covered. Railways, 100% uh, under the FDI uh, automatic route. FDI in defense has been liberalized to 49%. And in some case-to-case -case basis, it can go up to 100%. Uh, 
100% FDI permitted in railway suburban projects, high corridors, uh, high speed trains, dedicated freight trains and uh, insurance sector up to 49% it has just been passed by the parliament, GST likely to be implemented or going to be implemented on uh, 1st of April next year, a construction sector I've already covered. OIFCA, I am coming to now the implementation agencies. We have Overseas Indian Facilitation Center. This is a hand-holding agency. It was created uh, in the Ministry of Overseas Indian Affairs in collaboration with Confederation of Indian Industry to actually provide hand-holding services. And it's not just for the NRI's PIOs for which it was initially created. It's going to provide to, you know, whosoever, any foreign investment. And apart from this, we have Invest India, which has been created under FIKI. They have the investor facilitation sent under uh, uh, Make in India campaign because they are hosting the EVs platform also. So these two agencies are there to provide hand-holding services to small and medium investors, you know, who may be little wary of uh, going uh, to big consulting firms because of the fees. These are non-profit organizations and not just these two. Every state, as I said, is competing with each other. Every state has investor facilitation agency. They have land banks. <clears throat> it's competitive federalism. Now, each state is competing with the other to get more of investment, to get more of trade. Uh, we, in the Indian Embassy on our part, are doing our best to have more and more trade delegations. We, in the month of February, had a former delegation and we also are going to have a CII delegation uh, most probably in the month of June. So I think as far as governments are concerned, we just need to provide the right incentives, need to uh, have people get in touch with each other and business would happen so long as uh, you know we provide the conducive environment. Uh, sky is the limit. Let's hope for the best. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, our next speaker is Mr. Nandor Zemnitsky. He is Head of Department of Investment Promotion from Hungarian Investment uh, Promotion Agency. He would give his ideas about uh, Indian investments in Hungary and opportunities for further collaboration. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, His Excellency, dear guests, first of all, I would like to try my presentation. Just a moment, please. Somebody could help me. My name is Nando Zamnitsky. I am the head of department in this organization, the Hungarian Investment Promotion Agency. And um, because we have strict time limit, uh, I think 10 minutes as I remember, so I, I try to focus on the essence of uh, our activities in the Hungarian Investment Promotion Agency. What is the key of, the, of our company? is promotion agency because in Hungary there are two companies we are responsible for the investment promotion and there is another company a government company who is uh, responsible for the export promotion some of this here I think who will give a uh, presentation later and uh, the title is Indian investments in Hungary, I will show you and I will tell you who are the biggest and, and the key investors in Hungary, but also very important the opportunities for the, for the collaboration that we can have. Um, okay, the introduction of, we say in Hungarian people, 
maybe the Hungarian serum, but I would like to use HIPA because, because uh, it is easier here. Um, who we are? The government agency, which has been promotion supervised by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, as the Hungarian National Trade House Council is under the supervision of uh, this ministry. And uh, we try to give a one-stop shop for foreign investors. And I think it is um, not a news because, like the first secretary mentioned, the Invest India. And, and I think many, several countries, there are uh, investment promotion agencies because this is a, um, essential in uh, other countries to um, promote and, and find more and more serious investors and set them in our, in our country. Uh, we have, so we have one stop shop for foreign investors and our team, which is located near to the parliament in Budapest, <laughs> we have 80 employees in the headquarters and the network of colleagues abroad means that there are um, a lot of commercial diplomats around the world from Los Angeles to Tokyo and uh, also as the Deputy State Secretary mentioned uh, we have two diplomats in New Delhi and one in Mumbai and help us and um, strengthen the cooperation between the India and Hungary. What is our mission? Of course, implementation of foreign economic strategy and policy. But uh, the investment promotion is and the attracting foreign investors in Hungary is the extremely important uh, task of our, our work, our job. And uh, you see supporting reinvestment of companies already settled in, in Hungary. It is a very interesting question because not the new investors are really important, but the investors here in Hungary who uh, would like to extend, who would like to reinvest here, it is also a serious investment, not just a new investor uh, in Hungary. Um, what is the investment promotion services? I don't want to read all details, but you see the prepositions, implementations and operations we have tailored. Because if somebody uh, decide, somebody decides to come to Hungary, uh, the first, for example, we don't know exactly who is the investor. Some, many times they decide to come to Hungary anonymous, anonymously. They don't want to give the name, not just the branch, not nothing. Only they would like to ask information and our colleagues would like to give and, and try to give exact information, tailored information packages to the investors. And uh, later, uh, when we know it is unhide, it will be unhide, uh, organization of visit, visit and partner meetings, supplier search. <coughs> see, but I don't know because I, we have a strict time uh, limit, so uh, you can see how how this organization works uh, and what is the phases. What are the phases um, in this uh, decision business environment? Why uh, Indian investors? I think there are potential Indian investors here and Indian businessmen. Uh, what is the key reason to invest in Hungary? Uh, we have well qualified, cost effective labor force. We have a lot of universities, secondary schools, old universities from the, I think the 14th century. Yes. 14th century, the uh, University of Page was settled, I think it's seven, eight hundred years ago. And the uh, ideal location, the ideal location means 
Hungary is in an ideal location because it is in the center of Europe. Mm -hmm. But I think in Hungary we have ideal locations. I will show you later. And uh, the infrastructure and the high level of logistical transport and communication infrastructure we have, and uh, the local suppliers. Because, um, for example, in Hungary, the, the strongest uh, investment branch is the automotive industry, and uh, we have really strong, precise um, certificated local suppliers who can. Uh, supply to the foreign investors here, and what is, what is, uh, what is really important to so the government for some piece, right, because when somebody would like to, for example, an Indian investor would like to choose, would like to decide which com which country is the most favored, most uh, uh, which is the best for for them. Um, I think the government, for instance, is what I, I, will show, so I will show you a slide later, is absolutely important and has a key effect uh, in the decision. A location, why I say we are in an ideal location, we are in the center of Europe, we can reach the Western European countries. I know that the Russia and the Ukraine is um, nowadays a little bit complicated, but uh, here is the Balkan Peninsula, and so really interesting because uh, Romania and Bulgaria is the part, uh, part of the member, uh, member of the European Union, likewise uh, Slovenia and Croatia, and uh, and therefore a lot of uh, investors try to choose Hungary because it is very close to the Western European countries. And if, for example, they are a strong suppliers to the Western European countries, and the labor force and the salaries are lower here. They are started mainly in the Western part of the Hungary and, and in Budapest, the, the other most favorite. <laughs> Uh, location setting up a company or a uh, plan. Okay, here is um, what is very, really uh, important uh, double competition and uh, Eastern Euro European cities overall, we were ranked on the first place as the best FBI location in the region. I mean, you the best. Um, it was, it, was, it was the last year, and uh, <coughs> I think it, is, it, 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 it sounds really good. So we are uh, the most, most attractive city. And um, let's see the advantage of high quality infrastructure. Uh, the international corridors. At the, we are at the cross roads of four main European transportation corridors. Uh, I must tell you, in Hungary, it's quite okay. Uh, it is ready to the seaport because this is a landlocked country, and um, unfortunately, and uh, many investors try to find a seaport somewhere close to Hungary. And this is an ideal place in Croatia or in Slovenia. There are two uh, serious uh, seaports here, but uh, this highway, it is an ideal highway to the Adriatic Sea, but unfortunately in Bosnia and Herzegovina it is not ready yet. But uh, they, they are working on it. And, uh, and you see from Poland, and, and to Romania, uh, so there are serious uh, construction to make these this corridors, but this is unfinished yet. But this, this way, in the Western Europe, it is ready. So, so if you are con considering to setting up, setting up a plant and, and uh, supplying 
tower developer countries, this is okay because this network is ready here. Uh, extensive road and railroad, railway transportation, transportation network, and we have highly developed logistics and telecommunication systems, infrastructure, as I mentioned. And um, here is the expanding motorway network. Because this is not a big country, it is concentrated, and as you see, the red, red map, uh, the Budapest is the capital, and every way to go to and finish here in Budapest. But what is very important, in the yellow, yellow line, uh, shows that we are ready. This is usable, this is absolutely okay. Travel Croatia, also Croatia, Serbia, and this way to Ukraine, and this way to Austria and Germany, and so on. And uh, the <coughs> lines means they are, it is under construction. And uh, hopefully, in a, in a decade, it will be finished and, and we can use also this, this railways because it is really key, it is really important for the investors. Okay, we have 200 industrial parks uh, available for manufacturing activity, and uh, in our agency, there are a team who works with these industrial parks and they can um, offer green and brownfield um, territories, areas for investments, and uh, of course, really close, close to highways, trains, railways, and, uh, and, and we can Give, we can give every details what the investors need. Uh, for example, plus information so close to a river, uh, close to a big, big country, big city, because uh, uh, there was an investor who asked us uh, he was considering um, pound above 100, 100,000 population with 100,000 people. And um, on the next one, as we are friends, um, in 2013, the second highest FDI stock per capita in the CEE was in Hungary. Okay, we are quite close to Slovakia, so it is similar data, but uh, I think it shows that the FDS of the capital is quite nice in, in Hungary, uh, compared to the other countries. And, um, and the involved FDI stock percentage of GDP, we are on the first place as in 2013. We have now the data from the, the, the last year in 2014. We are waiting for it, but uh, the last exact data is here shows that Hungary is on the first place among Central European countries. Okay, you are, I think you are really interested who are the biggest investors in Hungary. Uh, of course, Germany, really strong here in Hungary. And uh, Luxembourg, but I think you know Luxembourg. Why? Because <coughs> many other nationalities from Luxembourg. That's why it is so strong. Netherlands, Austria, and uh, the other countries. I will show you later. <coughs> of course, here is India. I will show the biggest investors from India here. And uh, but. As, as you see, you can realize that this is from Western European countries and the uh, United States. <coughs> the investments in Hungary, I think it is not the full list, 
we try to find, try to show you some uh, Indian investors who are settled here in Hungary. Um, maybe I, I'm not sure, but there is a, um, a manager here from the CG. Person present here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so this, these companies are related to Indian companies. If you see the Hungarian names, for example, Technology Hungary Meeting, but the owners are Indians in, this, in these companies. Uh, it's very interesting, but not all, we not related all these companies because some companies decide to make their own way. And uh, they don't need the help of the Hungarian Investment Promotion Agency, but some of them try to find us, ask my information, and we work together. For example, the Public Consultancy Services um, this year. And our proudness on the next slide from India the Apollo Tires. They are very big, they are very strong. Yeah, here they won a prize as the biggest investor in Hungary in, in uh, 2014 from the automotive industry sector. And this is, of course, not just Indian, but the main investment decisions in 2014. And um, Bosch for example, from China. G, of course, you know, General Electric, SSC, Shared Service Center. And uh, uh, as you see, the automotive industry in Hungary, the suppliers are very strong. And this is the strongest uh, part of the investors who are here. I think uh, we are, I, I must tell you that, that uh, many, day by day, we met. Uh, Newer and newer investors who are interested in automotive from the automotive industry sector. Um, benefit from good plans. Okay, I will show you. Cost labor, high quality education. We have um, universities in Hungary. Page is the oldest university in Hungary from 30 to 80, so it is really all university, but um, um, it is also a um, key fact because many investors are interested in to find location close to the universities because of the engineers, because of the economists, and um, <coughs> It is a tendency, it was a tendency, but they try to find the investors places in the Western European countries because it is very close to the Western, the Western part of the Hungary because it is very close to the Western European country and Budapest. That was the two favorite places setting up the country or implement a plan and uh, this region, I will tell you, the opportunities are underdeveloped regions. And competitive um, <coughs> labor costs. So you see, of course, Norway is the highest. And uh, I think we are in the quite nice place here in Hungary. What are all the labor costs? So I think it's quite an opportunity compared to other 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 countries. And here are the incentives. This is very important because if somebody would like to choose Hungary and not just Hungary, because we have a very strong competition, it is. Mainly with the B4 countries, Slovakia, Czech Republic, Poland, nowadays Slovenia, uh, Romania. But uh, what the investor would like to ask, what about the subsidies? 
the cash grants, the development by fellow agencies, job creation subsidy, uh, and uh, my my colleagues from the investment promotion agency, uh, there is a department who make an exact calculation relating with the numbers what we get from the investors, and uh, we can tell. And of course, we will ask the Polish Polish business promotion agency, the Slovakian. And nowadays, not just uh, European countries are competitors, but for example, there is a company, uh, and we know that the competitors now in Mexico and China. So not not just the European country. So if somebody interesting me to to get me some grants, how how is it going? What is the uh, limit? How can how can they achieve this uh, grants and subsidies? Of course, we can help you, we can calculate, we can give all the information they need. Um, okay, here is the reg regional aid map. What I told you, because this is the most popular region, and we the best. That's, that's why it is white, mostly white. Uh, we try to push the foreign investors tower the under the underdeveloped region and you see fifty percent is the maximum intensity <coughs> of the large entrepreneurs and here only twenty-five and, and thirty-five. And in, in Budapest, this is the, the region of Budapest and there are so zero. So we, we uh, cannot give incentives in Budapest because uh, Budapest there are many investors so we are not interested in to attract uh, investors to, to Budapest but, but for example Mishports, Debrecen, Szeged, Pécs, they are excellent countries with, with universities with uh, many uh, interesting um, capabilities. So I think uh, that's important to know that there are differences uh, between the regions in Hungary. The Hungarian investment projects, HIT, is a um, different logic I mean, in, the, in, the, in, the, in our agency because it means for example, from the Arabic country, um, they don't want to set up a plan exactly, but they have a lot of money, and they told me that I have 10 million euros, and I would like to uh, invest some resort or some spa or some anything else, and uh, therefore the the Department of Hungarian Investment Projects uh, prepare Hungarian companies to uh, in, in this in this branch. In this, uh, for example, real estate innovation, medical recreation, and wellness tourism. Uh, and, and we make and other budgets from 1.5 million to 146 million and if they would like to invest in this uh, Hungarian company or resorts or anything else uh, we make an exact catalog about this project and about these 32 projects for example, Hungarian investment projects real estate you can see Good example. Here is the Dojo Office complex and the funding requirement 100 million euros. This is a landmark office building or the Marriott, the Sans Marriott, to the first airport program. So, somebody would like to invest in this um, project, the Vietnam Hub and our colleagues Hub. How, how can we? And, and realize this investment. Okay. 
Okay, thank you for your attention. I'm Lando Zanuski, but I will give you a main part during the, the coffee break. And this is the short introduction of the Hungarian Investment Promotion Agency. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Zeminski, for giving uh, an overview of the activities and what further could be done. We, of course, and we, you, you have a lot of investment from India to the extent of about two billion US dollars. We wish there were similar uh, amount of investment from Hungary to India. Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Amar Sina. He is CEO of RBS Trade and also the president of the Indo-Hungarian Chamber of Commerce. He would give uh, his idea about the chamber. How is it uh, going about? and its outlook for the future. Thank you. Our association, I first thought, is having birth banks, but uh, the problem is not with birth banks, the problem of delivery now. But I am very much hopeful that sooner or later it could take form. I have assurances from different <coughs> authorities, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, or Foreign Trade, and also from Hungarian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I hope we will be able to put in place within a very short time, although we have to do the application all over again, which we have already done. As far as collaboration between India and Hungary is concerned, I don't think I have to mention anything because this point has already been discussed in detail by our dear and respected ambassador and Mr. Kanguria. Of course, uh, when we were talking of make in India some time back, I remember that some friends were a bit very, Hungarian friends were very, why we are trying to take all the production into India? No, it's not that. We are not trying to take your production into India. Our companies are coming here, thereby they are developing. If you come invest in India, then first of all, as mentioned by our investor and Mr. Kanvija, that you are getting a getting market of 400 million consumers. So it's not simple export to India to do them for export, you have got so many hassles. You are getting a ready market and from there you can export as well. That's why you have uh, big companies like Apollo, PCS, and then uh, our company Reeves. They have got very big markets in India as well as abroad. Still they are coming because this is the way of uh, trade, this is the way to develop. <coughs> Of course, my veteran friend, general <coughs> friend, will be speaking about a bit about tourism, but uh, I would like to mention one or two points. Just the other day, I was surfing through the TV channels, and I happened to bump on a very, very unknown TV channel called PAX. It's a, a religious uh, TV channel. I don't usually watch TV, but since I have some time before the news, main news, I thought I would see that. There I saw a program on Indian tourism, on India. Somebody from the uh, quarter had gone to India, and he was very, very critical of what he had. I must say, if uh, you are buying your trabant, you shouldn't expect the services of a Mercedes. We have questions of different types in India. If uh, someone is paying about 2,000 points per day, I'm not looking down upon anything. I'm, I'm only saying that if you're paying only 2,000 points per day for a hotel room, you shouldn't expect the services of Intercontinental or Sheraton or, or Hilton. You should accept that. But uh, the whole program was based around that. But I'm sure our friends like Edith Oscar, she's here, and uh, our friend Farkash, he will tell you, we have all sorts of possibilities in India. We have, we are getting lots of tourists from India. So this sector is already doing quite well. Just yesterday I was talking with 
I, I had been assistant with the two travel companies, one from London and the other from Prague. They all say that uh, uh, in Eastern Europe, they have so-called uh, golden triangle as we have in India, golden triangle for tourists. Here it is Prague, Vienna and Budapest. But Budapest is very frequently left out by the groups coming from India. These, these two companies uh, who have come and studied and we had discussions, they said from end of March, October, early October, they are going to bring in about 180 groups of 50 people, 40, 50 tourists from India. Something is happening. <coughs> so we would also expect the same way, more and more tourists to go from here to India. And if we don't have problems of visa and other problems here, I'm sure many more Indians will come. They come to Prague, they come to Austria. I can tell you one more example. I was talking some time back to uh, another company, very well known, very big company, Kony. The director said that they signed some sort of agreement with Munich, Munich municipality. And when the first group came from India, the Indian tourist group, they were received at the airport, they were taken to a different hall, the VIP hall, without paying for it. Their passports were taken for, for uh, stamping. They didn't have to stand in queue. They got this kind of reception. They were taken different, to a different hall, have coffee, have some juice and so on. So much so that uh, the Indian group was invited to the municipality of uh, Munich. Now, Germany is an economic power. They don't need to attract more, more tourists, but still they are doing it. The mayor of Munich himself worked as kind. He took the Indian group around. I don't know when we can get this kind of uh, uh, service or this kind of uh, gesture from, from other places. But uh, I hope very much that uh, uh, the present Hungarian investor uh, in India, uh, he ha he's very keen on it. He said he would see to it that these problems are over. I do hope that these problems are over and that will help in strengthening our ties. Then uh, Hita HIPA and uh, also Mr. Chaba Baro, Deputy Secretary of State, they mentioned about the festivities given by Hungary. I have two companies. One is RPS Trade, just mentioned by Mr. Kandulia. The other is running a restaurant. I would like to have more restaurants. I have one in Budapest. We are doing very well. I have another in Vienna. I would like to have more restaurants in Hungary. But how can I have it if I don't get the, the cooks from India? For getting a cook from India, it takes five to six months. And I have to give the address of the place where the cook is going to work. Do I have to pay the rent for that place of five, six months before, without even opening it? So these are the hassles. And, uh, and uh, I'm sure there are many other entrepreneurs, they also have their own problems. The problem of visa is not only, uh, it doesn't, is not contained only to small companies like ours, but TCS also can tell you that uh, what kind of problems we face. If you are not able to solve these problems, we will have problems. We will, we will not have real development of, uh, what, uh, of, of trade and, and uh, economic relationship. Although the chamber, I always say chamber, I don't know what to say because I don't know if it's the chamber, it the association, or the confederation, or federation, it will depend on Hungarian uh, laws. Uh, I'm already seeing lots of complaints from Indian side, from Indian companies, as well as from Hungarian companies. But the usual things, <coughs> payment was made, 20, 30, 40, 60, 100,000 dollars in US, but goods were on delivery. It is happening on both sides. I won't say that Indians have been cheating. cheating. On Hungarian side, also there have been defaults. We are getting complaints. We will not be, even if we are put in place, we will not be a, 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 a judicial body. We will not be a police body. We, only, we can mediate, we can try to mediate, or we can try to further such information. Since these complaints are increasing day by day, I think we should be able to start our functioning as soon as possible to avoid such prevent such things.
I think uh, I was given 10 minutes and briefly I have said everything, almost everything. I would uh, call upon all the companies who are present here. I think there is a lot of interest in the joint seminar and I infer from that that there is a lot of interest in our chamber, Indian chamber also. I would request all of you to join our our, our chamber, our body, and continue to the development of Indo-Hungarian relationship. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Sina. We sincerely hope that both the birth banks and the delivery would be very soon and the chamber would be up and running. And in the meantime, it can give its useful contribution as an association, as a body, as you rightly pointed out. Uh, our next speaker is now Mr. Sandeep Deshpande. He's the Chief Financial Officer from CG Electric, uh, which is one of the biggest investors here. And he would talk about Indo-Hungarian collaboration in the coming years and would also give a brief outline about his experience, about their experience in Hungary. Thank you. Uh, His Excellency Ambassador Mishra Ji, respected dignitaries, Mindin Ki, Yoketu Fafi, Sepp Lani, Yona You can't be in Hungary and not speak Hungary. A flag here shows two great nations by each other and the collaboration which can result in the kind of fusion which you can see here, which I am going to try and bring around in the next few minutes. So what is the state of the union of India and Hungary? At level of government, we have a lot of bilateral agreements between the nations. Both Hungary and India, as you know, since the early 90s, have adopted the market economy model. Trade, I represent one of the companies mentioned here called CG. We are here since 2007. And we are part of this 2 billion Indian investment in Hungary. But is that all? Because India has been investing 22 billion in manufacturing sector alone, which I think has slightly missed Hungary. In terms of people, well, when I talk to a lot of friends in Hungary, they say India is a great country. We know about Taj Mahal. We know about the, about the glorious history. Uh, we had 1848 revolution, and perhaps you know a little bit about the 1957 revolution that we had. 1857 revolution that we had. But we are still not looking at Hungary as a first priority tourist destination. There is a lot of curiosity which has a lot of potential. What it is? What makes nations cooperate? Shared borders and cultures, do we have? No. <laughs> demographic dividend expectations, yes. There is a lot of demographic dividend that Hungary can expect from India. Cultural bond, yes, Korul Belun. Global alliance, no, we are not part of the same NATO or EU alliance. Then what will help us come together? It is the unexplored USP, which is the unique selling proposition of Hungary. What do I mean by unexplored USP? Is what are your core strengths as Hungary? My personal experience, and I wanted purposely to take this discussion away from, you may have thought that I am a CFO, so I will talk about deferred tax problems and other issues, but here I want to really talk about the potential of Hungary and the USP, which can turn around the great relationship with India into a very significant macro and mega economic opportunity. What it means, Hungary has wine and chocolates which are mainly available in Hungary. I have travelled in Europe and unfortunately, whenever I have gone, very honestly I have tried first to see whether I get a Gere Koper or a Shoshka and unfortunately I, I haven't got it within Europe. Thermal springs and baths, 
This is your USP. When I just walk down uh, from Pest to Buddha, I see so many thermal baths within just a small, small periphery of the city. You have archaeological monuments, you have been preserving caves, buildings, bridges which were destroyed during the world wars. You have a beautiful natural locale. If I tell you, you will be surprised that the two most beautiful countries in Europe, one everybody thinks it is Switzerland which is correct, the second is Hungary. Innovation and technology infrastructure, you are a central eastern European nation with all the West European facilities and which is what is your USP. Now how this USP will help you transform into a major economic collaboration with a country like <clears throat> India. You know India, the size of the population is 1.3 billion for the last census, out of which the potential people who can drink wine, can, you, can anybody guess? Okay. Yeah. So, whiskey, yes, correct, you're right. So, if you see in India that the potential of wine drinkers is close to around half billion, you can get that potential converted because there are half billion people who consume alcohol. Okay. Then you have in India, as I told you about this. Thermal water springs. There are 340 hot thermal water springs in India. And let me tell you, they are nowhere compared to the thermal baths that you have. So, you can imagine the potential in India. It's a population country. In every, but India has water parks. India has, has got amusement parks. Even in dry areas like Rajasthan and Gujarat, there are very much water parks and amusement parks and in Gujarat and near Bombay which is the which is the commercial capital of India there are a lot of hot water springs so can you imagine the amount of footfalls if you erect thermal baths there you will get and combine that with Ayurveda from India this is where we can actively collaborate and see opportunities of economic growth between the two nations when I come to say archaeological monuments and preservations, <coughs> India also has a great history of several kings, especially <coughs> Shivaji if you have heard about Rajputs. And there are a lot of forts and old archaeological monuments in India which have to be you know, managed much better today as compared to what they are. And if you see the way you have managed your archaeological monuments, if you are able to bring that technology to India, I go a little further and blend it with Make in India, which my good friend Mr. Khanduja, Honorable Mr. Khanduja was talking some time back. And we can collaborate and use Hungarian technology to make all this in India. You can change the way the forts look in India today, make them as good as your castles like Vishegrad the Buddha castle, Easter Gom. You can use wine technology to bring a lot of area under coverage. There is already one season of wine growing in India which happens every year. But if you adopt the Make in India methodology and we are able to then make in India and not export because export will attract you a lot of import duties and will put you in an unfair competition with wines from California, from Argentina, from Australia, from South Africa, from France, from Italy. But if you are able to use this opportunity of Make in India and collaborate together as wine growers and approach the Modi government and take under your area of production wine because what India lacks, it has the climate, it lacks the refrigeration, it lacks the wine cellar technology, it lacks the logistic which is beginning to develop. So using this, Hungary can expand its footprints in the whole global market. As somebody said that you can even export from there to any other country. So it will be Hungarian wine which will, getting, will be getting exported. It will be counted as a part of your national gross national product. 
tourism in Hungary. <clears throat> I know that many of you are very proud about the tourism footprints in Hungary. Let me tell you that your potential is still more than this. Now I am going to talk something different slightly. So uh, please excuse me if you don't like the concept much. Uh, you know, <clears throat> like we have to create an AO factor. You know how many Indians travel every year? Close to 25 to 30 million Indians travel every year. On an average, 30 to 35 percent come to Europe. Okay? And <clears throat> if you see that you have, can capture a part of this pile of the tourism. What wonders it can do to your local infrastructure, your local <clears throat> real estate pricing, your local ancillary industry. And how will it happen? There are some marquee concepts. You have to create an AO. Like why will an Indian want to visit Hungary? And why not UK or France where he can go and see Eiffel Tower which he has heard since childhood. So <clears throat> what I wanted to tell you was that have you seen this? This is Lord Shiva, <clears throat> the biggest deity of Indians, of the largest population of Indians. That is the Danube Bend. This is the Balaton Lake and this is another view of the Danube Bend. And this is an area in India called Murdeshwar in South India where they erected a Shiva statue like this. If you are able to erect statues of Indian gods like Shiva or Lord Ganesha, which are very universal gods accepted across the world. Even Barack Obama prays to Lord Ganesha, as he said recently, or Lord Hanuman. So, what I am suggesting to you is that this will create the AO factor, and every Indian would then want to be part of coming to Hungary at least once in life. So, what will happen? The Hungarian will come to India, the, the, sorry, the Indian will come to Hungary. He will enjoy seeing the sights here, not just the Lord Shiva statue or the Lord Buddha statue, but he will go around the wine country, he will taste wine, he will take back the experience back to India. He will tell all his friends that, look, I went to Europe, I went to Europe, you know, I went and prayed to Lord Shiva also there and then I also enjoyed. There are thermal parts. So, you know, that is how we can create a cross-cultural AV and cross-cultural you know, inspiration between both the societies and bring the countries together. And this will help us to achieve <coughs> all the economic benefits that can start. The biggest thing is that it's my dream, you know, that as long as I'm in Hungary, I want to see an India, India Budapest direct flight. <coughs> and I think that if this idea is if you are able to work on, this dream would, would come successful one day. Especially, there are two more concepts, I just like to not take much time off you. I know all of you want to drink tea. So, one is, today, France, UK, Belgium, you, you can see, take any Bollywood movie of the recent past, and it has the picturesque locales in these nations. There was a Bollywood movie which I saw, 16, 17 years back, it showed one of the bridges, but unfortunately it was mentioned as, as another country in Western Europe. Why? Because there is a lack of, of relatedness of Indians to Hungary. So if you are able to give good tax incentives to the Bollywood film producers, we will be able to attract the best films which are shot in Europe, in Hungary, and which will help you to sell the whole message of Hungary across back to at least 800 million viewers of what Hungary is. And this is how I think we can come together. Today is a world of cricket, a lot of European nations. You are a very great sporting nation. So you can also master a little bit of cricket so Indian cricket can come to Hungary. Thank you very much. Uh, the next presentation is by Mr. Tibor Goyash, Head of uh, a Department of Directorate of International Relations 
from the Hungarian National Trading House and he's, his, the theme of his presentation is Commercial Bridge. Uh, welcome Mr. Goyash. is built on two main pillars, on two main <coughs> networks. On one hand, uh, we have a Hungarian network uh, of uh, companies, more than uh, 1,700 companies, which are related to the, uh, to the trading house. Um, our uh, colleagues are continuously screening uh, the Hungarian market and looking for products, products that are specially export capable <coughs> and uh, which are which are expected to be strong uh, on, the, uh, on the external markets. On the other hand, we have uh, a network of trade offices uh, all around the world. Uh, later on you will see a, a geographical uh, a distribution of these, uh, of these offices. We have, uh, we have 25 uh, offices uh, at this moment. Uh, we have opened uh, quite many last year. The main focus last year was to uh, build up a network of, uh, of local trading offices uh, in, uh, in Asia, in Africa, and in, uh, and in America. Um, this, uh, this focus uh, is still on and we still plan to open further offices this year and next year um, as well. Um, it is important to, uh, to say that uh, we are trying to build. Um, uh, we are not trying to build a, a huge structure, which is uh, which would be um, um, expensive and which would be physically huge. Um, the trading offices, the local offices, what we open there, uh, especially at the beginning, at the initial phase, are relatively small. Um, they are one to maximum three um, 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 colleagues working working there. Of course, later on, if the uh, if the uh, trade volumes would, uh, would increase, then of course we can increase the size of the local offices as well. We can um, also open uh, more offices in one given country. Um, then then we, would, uh, we would all 
this react on, on, on the given situation. However, uh, our aim is to have offices which are flexible, uh, cheap and efficient. So what are the main uh, services? Uh, what is the added value of the uh, trading house? What can we offer? Not only for Hungarian companies, but also for uh, companies on the local markets. Uh, first of all, um, um, one of the main um, uh, tasks of the local uh, trading houses is to identify uh, specific, very specific business opportunities uh, on the local markets. Why is it important? It is important because on specific business opportunities we can easily and efficiently can react and, uh, and we can close transactions in a relatively short period of time. So the more specific uh, business opportunities we need to deal with, the faster we can find the, uh, the Hungarian partner and the faster we can negotiate and, uh, and close transactions. Of course, our task does not stop uh, uh, when we would deliver a business opportunity, it rather starts um, as we also uh, um, um, cover uh, the entire transaction from the, uh, from the initial period of, uh, of the offer until the last, pe last period of delivery and even going further we are also able to manage even uh, um, 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 guarantee and warranty issues um, also we can uh, completely deal with uh, shipping activities so this is something what a, uh, what a local Hungarian, a Hungarian company would not need to deal with uh, and exporting to, uh, to foreign markets. And also uh, there is one uh, important uh, part of our test is the uh, financial assistance what we are able to provide uh, to Hungarian um, companies. Um, on one hand uh, we are in close relationship with the Hungarian Exim Bank. Um, on the other hand we are able to step in the transaction process directly and we are able to uh, buy uh, products and services from Hungarian companies and sell them uh, to, uh, to the local buyers. It is important because in this way we are financing the transaction, and not just financing, but we are also taking all the risks which should come with it. Um, and uh, as we know that uh, in experience we see that uh, the financial risk would many times um, 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 stop the transactions from closing. And this is something what we can help with. Um, from the January 2015, uh, there's also a new group of tasks what the Hungarian National Trading House is uh, taking care of. And this is business diplomacy. Um, what does it mean? Um, it means that uh, we are coordinating and organizing incoming and, uh, outco and outgoing um, um, business uh, business. Um, um, uh, forums and uh, and uh, and, uh, and business groups. Uh, we are organizing B two B meetings and uh, and also exhibitions. Um, if you go to the uh, to the website of the uh, of the trading house, um, I have been there and it's rather easy to navigate on. Uh, I have tried it. With a matter of few clicks, you can uh, you can see the list of uh, upcoming events in uh, in Hungary. And you can, uh, you can also with a few clicks, you can register and uh, and uh, take, uh, take part in the events um, for free. Um, so uh, the vast majority of the events what we uh, what we offer are, are for free for the Hungarian and also for the uh, for the uh, foreign uh, companies. Um, here you can see the uh, industries what we uh, what we cover in Hungary. Um, we have uh, more than 30 colleagues in the Budapest office who are uh, who are in constant uh, relationship with the, one, with the 1,700 Hungarian companies. We cover industries from agriculture, continuing with the environmental industry, automotive, healthcare, electronic, and also also the chemical industry. Um, basically, the entire spectrum of the, uh, of the um, Hungarian industry. I will skip the next slide and, uh, and 
continue with the uh, with the goods and uh, and services what we can what we focus on uh, on the Hungarian market. Um, our aim is to, uh, to to create a long term um, a long term um, 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 advancement against the uh, against the competitors on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, external markets and. Uh, the most important uh, tool for that is to uh, is, is to identify products in Hungary which are um, quality-wise uh, better than than rest of the than rest of the others. So we're looking for strictly for premium products, those products who can be uh, who can be successful on any market on the on the long term. Um, here we can see some examples. Wine has, has been mentioned before. Yes, wine is uh, is, uh, is one of the one of the top products. What uh, what can be successful on any market in the world? But I would also emphasize juices, herbs, uh, cosmetics, meat products as well, and furnitures. Products is products are one part of the equation. Um, maybe at least as much, but. Maybe even greater uh, emphasis should be put on uh, on, uh, on technologies, um, technologies that are offered by the trading house in in some kind of packages. So we would like to we are trying to integrate uh, the interrelated technologies and try to uh, to sell them and promote them on the external markets as uh, as uh, as a package. Um, for example, and it has also been mentioned before, I'm, I'm, I'm also highlighting the smart city projects which are becoming increasingly popular and, uh, and there is an increasing demand on the Asian market for uh, smart city projects. Um, um, we have specific examples in, uh, in China and in uh, Vietnam and, uh, and it has been mentioned that uh, in India it's also something very, very actual. Um, in terms of India, I would also highlight the environmental protection um, technologies, the uh, water treatment uh, solutions, uh, and also healthcare projects are are, uh, are are very interesting, and there is a great need there. Uh, this is something what the uh, trading house is capable of providing. Of course, these technologies are never ready. Uh, they are always developing, and uh, this is something that we always look for, new technologies uh, and technologies which can be in integrated in our uh, existing packages. In the next slide you can see um, um, the distribution of our trading houses around the world. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, quite a few um, um, trade houses in Africa. We have two in uh, Latin America, in the Western Balkan, in the Middle East, in Russia. Uh, in Russia, we also have and, uh, and the CIS countries, and in Asia as well. In Asia, we have uh, today we have uh, training classes in five uh, uh, countries: Singapore, Laos, China, Vietnam, and uh, Mongolia. And there is one country which is eagerly missing from the list, and uh, this country is, uh, is India. And uh, this is something what we would like to uh, um, um, deal with in the future. Um, so that's why the, uh, uh, the Hangar National Trading House has made the decision to open a trading house in India. Uh, and hopefully we will be able to, uh, to open the office uh, uh, on the course of 2015, but, uh, but definitely in the first half or first quarter on, in 2016, the latest. Um, it is a huge step forward. Um, in the next slide, um, here are some basic information what, uh, why the Indian economy is so, uh, is so uh, um, 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 popular and, and, uh, and why should we enter there. Um, and I think it has been, uh, most of these uh, um, features have been emphasized in the previous presentations before. But, uh, but yes, uh, the population is enormous, 1.3 billion. Um, there is an increasing middle class uh, with an increasing uh, um, purchasing power. Um, the structure of the, uh, of the population is also very, very interesting because 50%, approximately 50% of 
the population is less than 25 years old. Uh, something which 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 could give a boost to the to the economy in the in the long run. Um, according to the World Bank, the annual GDP was five percent. However, um, past is less important; future is more. Um, it is expected uh, that India will have a GDP increase above seven and above eight percent in the forthcoming years, which is which is very very uh, appealing. Um, a few words about the export and the import characteristics between the two countries and, uh, um, and it is interesting that uh, we have uh, exported in 2015 approximately 230 million USD worth of products services to India and we have imported uh, almost twice as much. Uh, so this is something what the Hungarian Trading House would like to change or would like to achieve the ratio a little bit. Uh, to the direction of, uh, of uh, export volumes, but the uh, uh, but the structure of the uh, of the trade relation is uh, has been also mentioned by Mr. Ambassador that we are exporting machinery, importing machinery, and exporting chemicals and importing chemicals. Um, the, uh, the there are two significant differences between the, uh, the, uh, the trade uh, um, relations is the medicine, what we export and we are importing a lot of clothing products. Um, also the trading house would like to uh, um, um, make the uh, variation of products a little bit, a, a little bit um, 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 better. So uh, um, we, are, we will be focusing on, as I mentioned, for technologies and on agricultural products. So once the uh, National Training House will open an office in India, what are the services, what we, what we can offer, what, what can the Hungarian companies and the, uh, and the, uh, and the uh, local companies uh, expect from the, uh, from the Training House? From the Hungarian point of view, there will be an office which will directly represent the Hungarian products and services. They will be a face given. Uh, to these products. There will be someone there who will be able to face-to-face uh, -face represent uh, the technologies and the, uh, and, and, the, uh, and the export capable products, which is extremely important, especially in the, uh, in the Asian markets. Um, also, um, various business events will be organized, B2B meetings um, um, and, uh, and, uh, and other business trips. The, uh, the Hungarian companies will be given the chance to uh, to make face-to-face uh, -face, uh, meetings and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, make deals directly with uh, with the local buyers. Uh, from the uh, point of view of the uh, Indian companies, there will be a Hungarian company uh, uh, next door. Um, uh, who has uh, um, direct access uh, to the most export capable and the best Hungarian products. And there will be a, an office which will be uh, able to, uh, uh, to bring those products a little bit closer to the, to the uh, Indian buyers. And they will have the chance to get to know this and will have the opportunity to decide whether it's worth to buy them or not. Um, I think this is uh, something which, uh, which is extraordinary and, uh, and something which is not done before and we are uh, anxiously looking forward to see what results will the ex office bring in India. So that was the presentation. Um, later on I will of course stay here and uh, if there is anyone who would like to have further questions related to the Hungarian National Trading House, um, I will be more than happy to, uh, to answer. Um, also in this slide uh, you are able to see my, uh, my uh, email address. So in case you would like to uh, send me any question or any information by email, then there will be no miss. I will of course handle the and do the request. So thank you very much and uh, and please enjoy the rest of the rest of the day.
thank you very much, Mr. Goyash, for this comprehensive presentation and bringing to our notice that uh, exporting or uh, enhancing the trade relationship is very much on the radar of the Hungarian government and also giving an encouraging time frame for an establishment of an office in India. Thank you. Uh, the next presentation, uh, talking about radars and high-tech things, is by a company which deals with high-tech uh, uh, exports, high-tech manufacturing, BNC Bon Hungry Electronics, and the presenter is Dr. Karoi Kazi. He would give his perspective on Indo-Hungarian collaboration in high-tech sectors. Thank you. Uh, sorry, before I proceed further, uh, our chief guest uh, for this uh, seminar, Dr. Zolt Bechei. Honorable Minister of uh, State for National Development. He is amongst us and I would like to extend a very warm welcome to him. Thank you very much, Excellency. Dr. Kazi, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the possibility to talk about a few sentences about the high-tech cooperation with uh, India. Uh, Due to the uh, little bit late of uh, the program, I'd like to be as short as possible, but uh, keep the information that I, we wanted to transfer to you. Uh, BH is a high-tech uh, electronic company uh, established in, in 1991. Uh, originally, it was a German-Hungarian uh, company, but this time we are a 100% uh, Hungarian company. So we are going against the international trends. Uh, our main areas are the space, uh, defense-related uh, development and manufacturing, uh, aeronautics and uh, mobile-related uh, projects. <coughs> we have a lot of representation in different countries. I hope the trading houses will uh, have a lot for us in the future. Uh, a few numbers only. Uh, our uh, products and our uh, yearly income is uh, more than 70% uh, coming from, from export. And this 70% export, uh, the 30% of this export is uh, uh, directed to India. So in the uh, second half of our presentation, Mr. Uh, Janos Sormosi, our uh, <coughs> aerospace director, will explain a few uh, projects which we were uh, making to uh, the direction of India. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, different uh, uh, quality assurance. I don't want to step into this uh, more detail. Uh, and uh, I'd uh, like to introduce uh, Mr. Shoi Moshe, who will continue the presentation. He's the person in charge uh, in this direction. This is why I pass to the next slide. <coughs> uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, for us it's uh, uh, always an honor to be here in this house and enjoying the uh, uh, reception of, of the embassy. Uh, please, uh, uh, let me allow to, to share some information. I just came back from India yesterday, so I can provide a really fresh information. BAG <laughs> um, uh, was the first company uh, from Hungary who started uh, operation in a high-tech sector in India. Uh, and uh, I listed uh, some uh, organizations which are representing the high-tech industry of uh, India from uh, three major areas, uh, namely the uh, aeronautics, defense and space. Uh, all of these uh, major players are our customers for uh, almost 20 years. Um, there are some uh, well-known names like Bharat Electronics, HAL, uh, and some DLDO organizations, and also the uh, space research organizations of uh, India. Uh, we have <coughs> hundreds of different uh, products, uh, but I would like to highlight only a few of them, which uh, has already great importance and we are very proud of uh, them. Uh, on, the, on the slide you can see some uh, instruments, and uh, these were uh, supplied to uh, assist uh, Indian ambition of uh, exploring the uh, space. Uh, one of the 
the project was that we participated in the Chandrayaan one, and that was India first uh, moon mission, uh, completed in 2004, and the recent one is the uh, India Mars mission. India was the four, uh, fourth country in the world who <coughs> sent a space probe to uh, orbit around the Mars, and uh, India was the first country who could uh, do it successfully for the first round. And this uh, uh, project was uh, very cost-effective. The chairman of ISRO, on uh, smile on his face, he said that uh, India made this uh, mission with uh, less budget uh, than the Hollywood movie, uh, The Gravity. And uh, you can see those products. These are part of the uh, deep space network of uh, India. There are big, uh, huge antennas several places and the ground stations. And uh, uh, ISRO is receiving uh, the signals from more than 350 million kilometers from, uh, uh, or, uh, by our instruments. Um, also, our instruments are uh, installed on the, on the tracking ship of Yamuna, which is cruising over the ocean. For uh, ground segment, we have many, many products. I do not want to go into details, but you can just see that uh, these are all state-of-the-art uh, products and very well accepted in India. Uh, other fields are also, also managed uh, successfully. These products uh, can be found in different DRDO organizations, uh, in radar technology, very important some systems and uh, the demand is uh, very uh, huge and uh, our products are uh, very well accepted and uh, demanded. Uh, this product, for example, this one is part of a modern phase array radar system and these is, uh, units are for uh, so-called TACAN, which is a communication system between the aircraft and the ground stations. Uh, these are telecom and transmitters that it is not enough just to receive uh, signals from the satellites. It is also important to command them and send the uh, information data to them. <coughs> this one is a, a high-tech equipment. We developed it also for an Indian request uh, for a UAV mission. This is a unmanned uh, LNR, uh, airplanes and uh, it uh, is well functioning over there. <coughs> Uh, just a few words about our techno uh, technology uh, background. We have a uh, uh, high-tech building here in Budapest, uh, and we can provide all of the technologies which are absolutely requested to uh, design and manufacture this kind of high-tech equipment, green room, anti-static uh, labs, and uh, climate chamber, and laser technology lab, CNC machine shop as well. You can see uh, here, this is a microwave test lab, really state of the art. And uh, this is a so-called anechoic, RF anechoic chamber. Uh, this is necessary to, to measure the unwanted uh, electric, electric emissions of the different signals and uh, these are part of the requirements of the customers. Uh, this is uh, also part of the satellite communication system. Uh, it was successfully launched from Sherikota, the Indian spaceport, in uh, 2011, and uh, it's successfully performing its uh, mission in space. And uh, this is the end. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kasi and uh, Mr. Sonam uh, I had earlier said that for Indo-Hungarian relations to grow, the sky is the limit. I had not realized that we've already breached the sky limit and it's gone to the outer space. So we can say that mass is the limit probably or beyond that. Uh, uh, I now request Honorable Minister, uh, Dr. Zol Tabeti, to kindly give a keynote address and enlighten the audience. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, may I warmly welcome you and again I would like to thank you, Your Excellency, the invitation that I can be here on behalf of the Hungarian government, on behalf of uh, the transport uh, uh, ministerial leadership. Uh, today, uh, you know, as I 
as, as, as I work in the Ministry of the National Development. And uh, uh, let me warmly congratulate uh, to arrange this type of meeting between businessmen to raise the interest of uh, different partners and uh, uh, protagonists. Uh, I remember that three years ago when I was uh, State Minister for Foreign Economic Issues in the Gondel, we had the first uh, meeting or the meeting where I was invited by your predecessor and I think that it was also very interesting an interest raising type of uh, uh, meeting and uh, when, uh, when three years ago after the crisis we have sat down with your predecessor your excellency who was and his team was also very very active as you are um, uh, here in Hungary uh, we set two different lines or three different lines how to move on with the economic cooperation between our countries the first to increase uh, the level of uh, trade between the two countries uh, and parallelly with that of course uh, to increase the FDI movements and the research and development cooperation at that time and the second, that was a dream, and it remained still a dream, but I hope once it will be a reality, to establish a direct flight, air flight between India and Hungary, and that's why to link uh, uh, one of the most important Indian uh, city, either it is Delhi or Bombay or even Mangalo, but to link India directly uh, through Hungary to Central Europe and uh, I remember that uh, several years ago before uh, uh, the visit of Prime Minister Orban took place in India because first we had to postpone it because uh, in early 2012 uh, the date was not correct for uh, Prime Minister Singh but later on it has come about and it showed a very good atmosphere in order to go further with our cooperation. Uh, we also analyzed these type of questions and possibilities and I was also fascinated that how the impression of the Hungarian uh, culture is, uh, uh, or, or, or how the Hungarian culture is duply rooted in India. We have got the Cultural Institute and I think it's a, it's a very important actor in Delhi. And also I was very surprised that uh, the cooperation between our experts, first of all the background logistics of our military experts, how developed it was, even if we are from the other side of the world, but uh, you know the good relations and the personal relations and the confidence, even in the background logistical issues, uh, uh, is very very important and I, I hope that it will be also very important in the future. And I also remember that Prime Minister Orban visited you in India. Also, we said that uh, you know, there are new fields in the research and development. I hope that this joint, uh, not very big, but uh, more than symbolic uh, funds can work uh, correctly together between our people and uh, between our researchers. And I also hope that what we said that even uh, the cooperation between the civic or peace field, peaceful nuclear technology exchange of views will be a reality in the coming years and very soon. And I'm also very happy that the dream of that time to have a good uh, aeronautical cooperation through the presence of uh, the uh, Born Hungary uh, can also give a new impetus to our cooperation and, uh, also in the financial field and the digital field. In the service field as well, we shall operate quite well. That is my uh, impression and uh, sooner or later this type of increase raising cooperation and this type of seminars will help us to get closer to each other and as I said, one day uh, we shall have also a direct air flight as the uh, a dream, a final dream and final point of our cooperation will come about. Uh, unfortunately, our uh, national airlines in the meantime collapsed, uh, but also there were some accidents in the Indian airline industry as well. 
but uh, sooner or later I'm absolutely sure so it's my maybe mother-in-law. So I will <laughs> 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 Sooner or later, you have this accident. <laughs> so uh, uh, I hope that uh, that this type of cooperation will come about, because the human contact, both for tourism, both for for students, uh, these are very important elements between between our nations, and it can increase the economic impact. And as far as uh, I know, uh, here in Ferreira Airport, we shall have a close contact with the Chinese airline Air China very soon, with the, with the Canadian Airlines, between Toronto and Budapest, we shall establish also an air flight. I'm still confident that uh, somehow in the coming years, with such a big country with uh, so numerous population as India, we shall also have a direct air flight somehow, and it will give a new uh, qualitative uh, level to our cooperation. As far as the economic uh, cooperation and trade cooperation, there are two type of two types of analysis which we can give. One is that we are not really satisfied with the level of uh, trade between our countries because in the other hand export it, it amounts to any of the Baltic states uh, or export to India and I think that as a big country it can increase and even it can be much higher if I take into consideration how uh, our export is progressed to China for instance or Japan why not to increase this type of level to India uh, but I see that uh, the inner sea in order to increase our cooperation is a uh, number one enemy. First of all, how to get there, how to get uh, cooperation closer in order to increase this type of uh, uh, trade relations. So in this sense, I am not fully satisfied. But if I was the figures from the Hungarian point of view, I could see that even uh, between 2013 and 14. We more than doubled our agricultural product export to India, which is for the Hungarian economy, it's a very important factor because uh, the Hungarian added value is the highest one in our agricultural products to be exported. So it's, uh, it's an important result and it's an important achievement that uh, products with such a high Hungarian added value could penetrate significantly into the Indian market. On the other hand, I think that uh, uh, the high-tech uh, export from India to Hungary, first of all, on the machinery side, is also increased and <coughs> quite important, which is also, I think, uh, very, very attractive because from your side, uh, it can be also an important Indian added value, which comes uh, to Hungary and realized in the Hungarian market. So we cannot be fully dissatisfied because we, if we analyze carefully the economic relations and the trade relations in that respect, there are also positive signs. And I also hope that uh, your negotiations with the European Union in terms of the uh, free trade agreements and related and, and trade related questions um, will be very fruitful in the coming uh, years and decades and it will also open our bilateral markets towards each other and also I hope that it will, uh, it will uh, convince and uh, win against the inertia of uh, the long distance uh, possibilities. So these are the questions which I hope we can progress for. I also hope that in the field of uh, services we, shall, we can be the basis, that is what we said three years ago and we still say, <coughs> that you can be the basis of the European activity. 
I am, I am very happy that uh, the Tata Group and several service uh, activity and regional service activity is established here in Hungary, as I could see some years ago. In the meantime, as a government commissioner, I had the privilege in 2010 and 11 start the negotiations with the Apollo Tire uh, uh, Company, and now I think that uh, they have decided uh, to have the production here. And I think it was a diplomatic success that before the crisis, before 2009, we had several challenges concerning the start of the activity of this company. Now in 2013 and 14 and 15, we don't have this type of problems in terms of the population. So we could solve uh, the problem that uh, for both sides, it will be a very positive sign how to progress further uh, with this Apollo uh, tire, with the Fredestein um, activity here in Hungary and uh, me, myself, I am very happy if we can see more than one, two or three uh, tire companies after the Hancock, after the Continental, uh, in that sense that we shall have also a new actor and a new protagonist. And it will follow, I hope, the success of of the, of the competitors or fellow uh, producers of the, of the, of the tires, of the volcanic tires. So I am very optimistic. Why not? Mm -hmm. And uh, I also hope that parallelly with your approach to the European Union, we can have also a good economic cooperation and higher quality cooperation with you. And I also hope that uh, the relations which has developed after 1947-48, after your independence, after the Second World War, will give a good background for our cooperation. I remember I learned at school, at the university as well, that uh, in 1956, how brave your attitudes towards the Hungarian freedom fighter was. And I think that there is no Hungarian uh, politician, even from the younger generation, who cannot ignore it and who, who will not remind uh, the audience uh, to this, of, this, uh, of this very important fact. And also in the 60s and the 70s, as I, as I said, uh, some logistical cooperation even uh, military or military related uh, cooperation has developed and Hungarian engineers has gained a very good reputation in India and also in the water management issues as well, this type of question which are important challenge for your country. I also hope that not only the knowledge of the Hungarians will be important in this engineering factor but also sooner or later we shall have those type of redundant or extra experts who will be able to fly to India to manage again uh, those type of investments which are necessary because after uh, the change of the Hungarian system the real question is not the good old uh, deep-rooted relations in engineering between our countries but the lack of people who can go there and their companies can send there for one or two years in order to have a cooperation or investment on the spot. Earlier in the 70s it was easier in Hungary because we had big state companies and people could do it. Now it's a big challenge and it's a challenge for the trade house, it's a challenge for the diplomats, how to find those people who can be deployed from Hungary to India or even to, from India to Hungary. Uh, who are, in that sense, redundant for their own activity of their company and who can be there and, and uh, follow up the services which are very important for both sides. These are the real challenges for me of nowadays. But, uh, as we could see companies who are becoming stronger and stronger, <coughs> like the Bon Hungary, uh, I am again confident and I hope that uh, these type of medium-sized companies, not only the big ones from both sides, it's a positive act. The data is here, Apollo is, is coming. But the medium-sized companies uh, who are established in the last 20-25 years 
we'll be also able to cooperate each other. We'll be also able to settle in the other uh, member state, even in the high-tech sector or even in the traditional one, as I said, the food industry or the food processing industry. These are also very, very important issues, which uh, I call your attention to. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me congratulate to this uh, meeting, to this seminar again. I wish you, Your Excellency, uh, active and proactive service here in Hungary. And uh, I wish you uh, good luck and I hope that in the coming years we can really say that there is a new quantitative or qualitative change in our cooperation. And India will fulfill in our Asian relations the place which, it, which she deserves and it will be our also very important partners, not only the top three, uh, Japan, China and India, but Japan, China and Korea, but also India will fulfill this issue due to its modernized sectors <coughs> and services. So thank you very much for being invited and I wish you good work and I hope it's again a beginning of a beautiful friendship, as I can call the, call the film of Casablanca, and we can have uh, concrete and pragmatic cooperation as well. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. That was a very comprehensive uh, viewpoint. Uh, your long association with India certainly has given a perspective. Be sure to benefit uh, from your support that we're getting from the government. Rightly identified food processing, direct airlines, uh, India-EU bilateral trade and investment agreement as the core issues. Uh, before you came, sir, uh, one uh, issue that was raised was also visa issue. Uh, which uh, we just wanted to bring to your attention. We hope that uh, with your support, the time taken would get substantially reduced. Thank you very much. Uh, our uh, next presentation is on the role of uh, Hungarian Chamber of Commerce and Industry in promoting institutional linkages to further bilateral economic cooperation. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Excellency Mr. Kovac Vince, Vice President uh, of the Chamber, the presentation would be in Hungarian, your speech would be in Hungarian. So those who need uh, uh, to have listened to the English version, they can take the equipments from there, please. Thank you. Excellencies, Nagy Kövárd úr, Milyen tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim! A Magyar Kereskedelmi és Iparkamara nevében nagy tiszteltel köszöntöm Önöket. Köszönjük a lehetőséget, hogy ezen a konferencián ismertethetjük a kamara álláspontját. És egyúttal köszönöm a rendezőknek, hogy a magyar nyelven adhatok elő, hisz nyelvtudások nem érje el azt a szintet, hogy állőséggel angolul adjak elő. Német cégeknél dolgoztam, és inkább az a nyelv, ami hát, jobban menne. A kamara szempontjából világítanám meg a kereskedelmi kapcsolatokat, kereskedelmi, illetve gazdasági kapcsolatokat. Mi is a szerepe a magyar kereskedelmi és iparkamarának a magyar gazdaságban? A Kereskedelmi és Iparkamara az ország legnagyobb vállalkozói szervezete 160 éves múltal rendelkezik, és köztestületként működik, nem érdekképviselet, hanem érdekérvényesítő szervezet. A Nemzeti Kamara koordinálja a 23 független kamarát, hisz három megye kivételével a kettő kamara van, minden megyében területi kamara van, és az úgynevezett kamarák kamarája a Magyar Kereskedelmi és Iparkamara. 2012-ben törvényi felhatalmazás kapcsán a vállalkozások regisztrációját kaptuk feladatul, és a Magyarországon lévő mintegy 700 ezer vállalkozásból ez idáig 500 regisztrált. Itt egy pillanatra megállhatunk, ugyanis a 700 vállalkozás elméletileg papíron létezik, körülbelül olyan 500 550 vállalkozás az, ami ténylegesen működő vállalkozás Magyarországon, ipar és kereskedelem területén és az agráriumnak a regisztrációja, illetve egy kamarai képviselete a Nemzeti Agrár Kamarára tartozik. A kamarai rendszer az egész gazdaságot képviseli, a mikrovállalkozásoktól a nemzetközi nagyvállalatig a multi cégekig. 600 munkatársa van, 
a magyar kereskedelmi és iparkamaráknak a 23 tárgyalati kamarát is beleértve, döntő többségük felsőfokú végzettséggel rendelkezik, és hosszabb ideje a gazdaság területén ténykedik, egy gazdasági önkormányzatként működik. A gazdaság általános érdekelnek érvényesítésén túl közjogi feladatokat kaptunk a szakképzés területén, különös tekintettel az utóbbi időben bevezetett duális képzésre, amely a szakképzéstől egész a felsőfokú képzésig kiterjed. Egy korábban Magyarországon jól bevált minta, ami most egy továbbfejlesztve egy német mintára a duális képzésnek a bevezetése, illetve folytatása a feladatunk. A nemzetközi gazdasági kapcsolatok fejlesztése is kamarai feladat, a külpiaci tevékenység pedig tradicionálisan kamarai alaptevékenység. A kamarai törvény hatalmazza fel a kamarát a nemzetközi feladatok ellátására. Az alapfeladatok a területi kamaránál vannak, hisz a területi kamara ismeri legjobban azon területnek a vállalkozásai, legyen ez ipari, kereskedelmi vagy szolgáltatás, amely közvetlen szolgálja ki őket, egyfajta tanácsadással, szervezéssel, a kiutazó delegációknak a szervezésével, üzletember találkozókkal, kapcsolattartás a külföldi területi kamarákkal, illetve okmányhitelesítési tevékenység. Ez a harmadik országokra terjed ki, hisz az Európa Unión belül ez a tevékenység nem ö, ö, folytatódik, a, viszont a nem Európa Uniós országoknál az okmányhitelesítés kamarai feladatként jelent meg. A MKIK külföldi piaci feladatai a területi kamarák nemzetközi tevékenységének koordinálása, kapcsolattartás az országos kamarákkal, mármint a külföldi országos kamarákkal, nemzetközi szervezetekben való részvétel, üzleti tanácsok, illetve tagozatok irányítása, rendezvények, kiutazó delegációknak a szervezése, a választott bírósági ügyek, nem csak nemzetközi, de belföldi ügyekben is, illetve nemzetközi reklamációs ügyintézés és a külgazdasági stratégiának a kialakítása, a kormányzat közvetlen partnere, illetve közvetlen partnere ezen a területen. Milyen intézményi háttérrel rendelkezünk? Az intézményrendszer létrehozása és működtetéséhez különböző tagozati területi kamarák vannak, a, MKIK-nál, ilyenek a vegyes kamarák közül, amint láthatjuk, magyar arab, magyar kínai, magyar orosz, magyar balkáni, kazak, mongol, török, német kamara, illetve vegyes kamarák is alakultak az utóbbi időben. Jelenleg négy vegyes kamara működik, a román, a szerb, az ukrán és a szlovák vegyes kamara. Ezt a végére kellett volna tegyem a hollapot, de a prezentáció ma délutántól fent lesz az MKIK hollapján, úgyhogy a kapcsolattartásnak a kérdéseit önök is el tudják érni, de azért a külgazdasági menüponton ott egy felsorolás van, ami, hogyha valaki ezek közül akar választani, részletes információt tud kapni a külgazdasági tevékenységről a hollapról is. Indiai, indiai kérdés, miért éppen India? Hát India először is a világ legnagyobb demokratikus állama és szabad piacgazdasága van. A fiatal, az indiai társaság fiatal, a társadalom fiatal, ezt említették már a korábbi előadók is, 65% a 35 év alatti, a lakosság fele pedig 25 évnél fiatalabb. A gazdasági kapcsolatok tartása is könnyű, hisz a nyelve angol, az üzletkötés nyelve, és az ipar az indiai gdp belül, mint az indiai gazdaság egyik zászlós hajója, dinamikusan fejlődik. Az ország energia és energiahordozó hiánya miatt kiemelt szerepe van a megújuló energia hasznosításának, erről is hallottunk a korábbi előadásokban. Az új Mondi kormány középpontjában, a programjának középpontjában a gazdasági fejlődés áll, és a Make in India, az új Mondi kormány nagyszabású programja, azt gondolom, hogy az iparfejlesztésnek az egyik alapja. Az általános információk inkább magamnak írtam fel ezeket, hisz azt gondolom, hogy aki ma itt volt az általános információkról már bőven hallott és látott. A gazdasági indikátorok tekintetében csak néhány számot szeretnék említeni. Láthatjuk, hogy a GDP egyfajta növekedése van, ugyanakkor az egyfőre eső GDP-nek 
egész pici visszaesése van 2012-13-ban, ez egyértelműen annak tudható be, hogy az indiai demográfiái adódóan az indiai népesség növekedése valamivel meghaladta az egyfőrási növekedés miatt a GDP összességével történő növekedését. Említettem, hogy az ipar az egyik zásolós hajója az indiai gazdaságnak. Ányhámértékű visszaesés volt 2012-től 2013-ra legalábbis a statisztikai adatok szerint. Ennek ellenére azt gondolom, hogy az iparban lévő ö, intenzív fejlődés, a hatékonyság nőtt, ennek tudható a GDP-nek ilyen irányú ö, fejlődése. Két olyan mutató, ami ö, nagyon pontosan jelzi az indiai államnak, az indiai gazdaságnak a fejlődését. Az emberi fejlettségi index az első egyharmadban van, 136 ország közül 136. helyen van, illetve 135. helyen 2013-ban. Ez az egyes skálán a, mutatja, hogy egy 55-56 százalék közötti, illetve 58 százalék közötti emberi fejlettségi indexe van. Ugyanakkor a hetes skálán a 144 országból az indiai gazdaság 2012-ben az 59 volt, és 148 remucsorolt országból a 60 helyen 13-ba. A 7 skálán a legfejlettebb ország Svájc, annak is csak 5,82 ez az indexe, tehát a 7 senki sem érte még el, egy nagyon jó számnak mondható. Azt gondolom, hogy a gazdasági kapcsolatok alapja, a megfelelő politikai kapcsolatok, amelyek az elmúlt időben fokozatosan fejlődtek, egész addig, amíg 2013-ban a magyar miniszterelnök Orbán Viktor vezetésével egy népes gazdasági delegáció járt Indiába, és ez egyfajta új lökést adott a gazdasági kapcsolatoknak, egyfajta gyorsabb és intenzívább fejlődési lehetősége. A magyar-indiai gazdasági kapcsolatokról néhány számadat van, már korábban, talán ennél jobban kiemelve láthatták a tisztelt jelenlévők ezeket a számadatokat, láthatjuk, hogy a két olyan terület van, amelyen különösen élénkek a kapcsolatok, a feldolgozott termékek, a gépek és a gépipari berendezése. Lényeges passzívummal vagyunk mi, magyarok Indiával szemben, de a gépipar területén lévő import, ez egyfajta hiánypótló szegmens a magyar gazdaságnál, és azt gondolom, hogy addig mi India számára, indiai gazdaság számára, mi magyarok jó piacnak számítunk, nekünk viszont ezek a úgymond hiánypótló technológiai szegmensek igenis szükségeltetnek, és a jövőben azt gondolom ezen a területen is, a feldolgozó ipar területén is további fejlődés válható de nem elhanyagolható a többi terület sem, mert ott is egyfajta fejlődés van, bár az energiaordozóknál nincs adat, tehát többieknél itt is az import a magasabb, ahogyha a mérleget nézzük. A legnagyobb indiai befektetésekről már volt szó, én csak azokat az indiai befektetéseket jegyeztem, amikben kamarai közreműködés volt, elsősorban magyar részről természetesen, illetve jelen pillanatban is élő kapcsolata van ezen cégeknek a Magyar Kereskedelmi és Iparkamarával, gyógyszergyártás, vegyipar területén, energetika, élelmiszeripar területén, autóalkatrészgyártás, elektronika, üzleti szolgáltatások, illetve a különböző informatikai, hardware illetve szoftvereknek a kérdésében. Ha a magyar vállalatok lehetőségét nézzük, akkor láthatjuk, hogy a perspektívikus ágazatok, illetve a termékcsoportok azok, amelyek mindenféleképpen a magyar vállalatok részére egyfajta lehetőséget adnak a további kapcsolatokra, új befektetésekre és a meglévőknek a továbbfejlesztésére. A gazdasági számokból is láttuk, hogy a gépipar, gépek és berendezések, megújuló energiával kapcsolatos termékek, hisz a megújuló energiával kapcsolatosan kivetített óriási számok, amelyik emlékeim szerint első titkáról előadásában láthattuk, azt gondolom, hogy egy olyan technológiát feltételeznek, ami a gazdasági kapcsolatokban a két ország 
kapcsolatában is ki kell, hogy használjuk mindkét részről. A hadipar, a vízgazdálkodási termékek, főleg a szennyvízkederés, a biotechnológia, agrártechnológiák, távközlési termékek, infrastruktúra, illetve továbbra is a már meglévő gyógyszer és vegyipari kapcsolatoknak a fejlesztése. Kamarai kapcsolatokról röviden. Indiában külön létezik a kereskedelmi és külön az iparkamara. Az indiai kereskedelmi kamara elsősorban a nagyobb ipari termelőegységek kis támogatására szerveződött, és számos szerve megtalálható az egész országban. Az indiai iparkamarát viszont a kisebb vállalkozások a vidéki képzőesek támogatására alapították meg. A Magyar Kereskedelmi és Iparkamarának a partnere Indiában az Indiai Kamarai Szövetség és a közvetlen kapcsolat pillanatnyilag az iparkamarának, Magyar Kereskedelmi és Iparkamarának az iparkamara, Indiai Kamarai Szövetséggel van. Itt jegyezném meg, hogy a Magyar Kereskedelmi és Iparkamara együttműködés kötött az Európai Üzleti és Technológiai Központtal. Miért említem itt most az indiai fórumon? Azért, mert ennek a fórumnak az a küldetése, hogy támogassa az indiai piacra való belépést olyan nagy vásárlásain biztosító területeken, mint a biotechnológia, az energia, a környezetvédelem, a környezetgazdálkodás és a közlekedés. Az Európai Üzleti és Technológiai Központ a, a, a következő szolgáltatásokat tudja, szellemi tulajdonvédelmével kapcsolatos tanácsadást, jogi, nemzetközi jogi szabályozás és adminisztratív tanácsadást, a tiszta technológiák transferének a támogatását, cégek, kutatók, beszállítók, vásárlók közötti kapcsolatképítésének elősegítését, piacilátésügyek megvalósítását, vásárokon való, konferenciákon való részvételnek az egyszerűsítése és a projektfejlesztésekben lévő aktív közre működés. A gondolatnak az elérhetőségét is föltettük az Európai Befektetési Tanács honlapjának a elérhetőség a következő látható. Milyen tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim, még egyszer köszönöm a lehetőséget. Azt gondolom, hogy a mai konferencia az indiai-magyar kapcsolatokat, vagy magyar-indiai, mindegy, hogy, hogy mondom talán, előbbre viszi. Én gratulálok a konferencia megrendezőinek, a nagykövetségnek és minden eddigi előadónak, és előre is az, az utána következőknek. Köszönöm szépen a lehetőséget, további szép napot kívánok! Thank you very much, Mr. Kovac Svensi, for this insightful presentation. I'm sure the, uh, there's a need to have more and more exchange of business delegations by FIKI from there and also by the Hungarian Chamber from here to give a boost, further boost to the bilateral relationship, I think, which could be considered uh, in the near future. Uh, the next uh, is uh, about the role of Exim Bank in financing trade and bilateral relationship with focus on SMEs. The presenter is Mr. Gabor Such. He's Director Acquisition, uh, Export Financing and Risk, and Risk Undertaking Solutions from Exim Bank Hungary. Welcome. Thank you. Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the opportunity for me uh, being here. I have uh, some bad news and good news. The bad news is that my presentation is usually 40 minutes long. The good news is that uh, there is only two presentations to the launch, so I try to keep it uh, 10 minutes just to highlight some uh, details uh, that I would like to address to the Hungarian guests and also to our Indian friends. And uh, obviously, if you have any questions after the presentations, uh, I will stay here during the lunch and uh, you can also contact us at Exim. Uh, probably most of you already know about Exim. Uh, we are not 
typical commercial bank and we are not a typical uh, credit insurance company. We are so-called export credit agency, uh, like India Exim or US Exim or CAFO in Germany. Uh, we are not competing with local commercial banks. We are providing services uh, for Hungarian companies together with the 21 Hungarian commercial banking partners. It's very important uh, to highlight that uh, we are also providing services for the Hungarian companies and also are able to provide services and insurance solutions for the potential Indian buyers. And uh, after a very significant uh, product development in the last couple of years, we are also able to finance investments made by Indian companies into the country. So I think. Uh, uh, even if an Indian company already present in the country or arrives to the country or Indian SME or big corporates would like to enter to the Indian market, uh, we have uh, some kind of solutions that we can help with. Uh, in the last 20 years, Exim Bank and Mahib, the bank and the insurance company, uh, were working separately. Since 2012, we are working under the same management, still two separate companies, but under the same management. I'm also uh, representing both companies, so it's a much easier uh, flow of work uh, for any potential customers. As you may see, in the last uh, three, four years, our asset size and loan portfolio increased significantly. We started a rapid uh, product development uh, in 2012, and due to this uh, program, in the last year, we, I think, uh, more than tripled our asset size and nearly uh, four times uh, the loan uh, amount. And in line with this, the, the percentage of the problem free loans uh, increased and it's uh, well over 95%. Uh, it's important to note that uh, our strategy is to support not just the Hungarian exporters, but also the subcontractors. Before 2012, we were not able to provide financing to the subcontractors of Hungarian exporter companies, but uh, we realized that in economical terms, they are also producing for export. So all of the Hungarian SMEs, who are basically the subcontractors of any Hungarian big corporates, are able to reach or products uh, directly or through our commercial banking partners. Uh, it's very important, especially after the crisis, that uh, the export capacities should be increased. There were many, many uh, necessary uh, developments that uh, didn't go through due to the crisis. Uh, we are able to finance Hungarian companies when they are simply uh, increasing their capacities. For example, if they enter into the Indian market or uh, any big Asian market, they will definitely uh, have to increase their capacities because the numbers we are talking about Hungary and Central Eastern Europe are much uh, lower than, for example, if you enter to the Indian markets and you are facing more than 1 billion customers. It's also important that if an Indian company uh, would like to enter to the uh, Hungarian market where they are already present and would like to make greenfield or brand investments, we are also able to finance those uh, investments. It's very important that uh, we would like to increase the credit capability of Hungarian commercial banking sectors. We are providing a cheap refinancing uh, to this bank at 0.1% in Euro and in US dollars. And in the coming months and the coming uh, years, uh, we are concentrating on the risk uh, taking uh, facilities as well. I've already mentioned that uh, we are providing our services through 21 commercial banks. Uh, this is the, these are the products that are available at this bank. It's important to note that in 2012 we only had one product that was a credit facility from two years up to five years. And uh, as you see, we have now over uh, 10 facilities available. The green ones are the financing products, the brown ones are the, the insurance products and the blue one is a product that we are working on now, probably with uh, a different name, but uh, we try to reach SMEs and micro companies in Hungary with some kind of solutions when uh, Exim uh, will uh, take part of the risk from commercial banks. Uh, I won't go uh, into details, I will highlight some of the products uh, later, 
but uh, what's important to note that from the investment phase, even if it's a new greenfield investment or, uh, or uh, uh, increase to the existing capacity through the production till income realization, Exim uh, has a product uh, that can be used by Hungarian exporters. These are the partner credit institutions, so I, I uh, uh, do ask all uh, or Hungarian guests that if they enter to the export market, then please uh, try to ask for exim facilities at your commercial banks. Of course, if they are not able to help or uh, if the commercial bank is not ready to take the risk uh, of a certain export uh, possibility, then we are ready to uh, review it directly as well. Uh, just some of the products, the export prefinancing facilities uh, slightly differs, but for example, US Exim or uh, India Exim is providing uh, to the local market. As far as I know, uh, India Exim is only providing financing outside of India uh, to, to, uh, to the customers of uh, Indian exporters. Uh, Exim uh, is also providing financing to Hungarian exporters. We usually uh, do it through the commercial banks and this financing can be used basically for uh, everything. Uh, we can finance uh, up to 85% of the commercial contract. Uh, the financing uh, can be provided between two years and five years and uh, with an equal amortization. So if anyone here in the room has uh, unsolved uh, export related financing issues, then this is a kind of product that's basically available at many credit institutions in Hungary. Also important that uh, the investment loan is available uh, in the last two years with similar conditions. Uh, you are able to use this loan when uh, making a new investment or just increase uh, to, the capac uh, to the capacities. Uh, our expectation is that uh, the export uh, revenues should increase by at least the value of the investment. So if someone invests uh, 1 million euro to the production, then we expect slightly more than 1 uh, million euro income from export uh, activities. Uh, already mentioned that we are also able to finance the suppliers of Hungarian corporates, basically with the same conditions up to 85 years, 85% uh, of the contract value uh, for maximum of 5 years and uh, the only uh, need of us is that uh, the product they are shifting the uh, exporter company or even if it's a service that they are providing uh, to the exporter company should finally be exported uh, and if this, if this criteria meets, then, then the financing is available. I think when we are talking about <coughs> India, a buyer credit facility can be significantly important. This is the typical product export uh, credit agencies are providing to <coughs> the customer of Hungarian companies. So if a Hungarian SME or a Hungarian big corporates uh, would like to sell an equipment, a machinery, a bigger value equipment to an Indian buyer. We are also uh, able to provide financing to the buyer of the Hungarian company. The tenor of the loan can be up to 10 years uh, with very favorable conditions. I will uh, show you it a little bit later. And uh, in this case, the loan is repayable by the Indian buyer uh, within five, ten years, basically up to the nature of the product uh, you are selling. It's important that we can only provide this financing up to 85% uh, of the trade contract, so 15% all source should be provided by the Indian buyer in cash. Uh, if a Hungarian company enters to the Indian market or any <coughs> foreign market first time, then uh, it's always a big question what should happen first to ship the product for, from Hungary or to make a payment from India. Usually, uh, the Hungarian companies are not uh, rich in, in, in cash, not uh, liquid enough, therefore, they are requesting the foreign uh, buyers to make advance payment. That is, of course, not supported <coughs> by, the, uh, by the foreign buyer. 
uh, they usually go for LCs and in order to avoid this uh, hassle, the export receivable insurance can be a very good solution for all these companies. Usually it takes a uh, month or years to negotiate uh, before the actual uh, deal takes place. Uh, during this period, we are able to uh, review the potential Indian buyer and we can actually set up a limit uh, for the Indian buyer. And uh, of course, we have to uh, review the financials. We have to get the financials from the potential Indian buyer, or we can get the financial from uh, external sources. And we can say to the Hungarian uh, company that up to 1 million euro and uh, up to a maximum of 23 months, uh, we can ensure the non payment risk of the Indian company. With this solution, the Hungarian company would be in the position uh, to supply the goods or services uh, as an open account uh, and to receive the payment later. Of course, if the Hungarian company uh, is not in a cash-rich cash uh, position, uh, won't be able to finance this, uh, this deal. Uh, however, with uh, uh, facility offered by the bank, uh, it's called supplier credit discounting, uh, we can also receive, uh, also purchase this receivable. So it can be a win-win-win situation when the Indian uh, party gets uh, basically loan, uh, short-term loan between 60 days up to 23 months. The Hungarian exporter gets the money uh, immediately after the shipment has made, and it's axiom uh, which running the risk uh, of the Indian party not paying. Uh, and the exit is uh, basically financing the whole transaction. I think when you, when you enter to the market, it's a great uh, sales tool uh, to try to sell your products on the Indian market, offering not just the product itself, but the short-term loan, uh, probably uh, for a slightly higher price, but it can be even uh, attractive for the Indian uh, party. Of course, if a company uh, enters to the Indian market, we are able to provide tender guarantees, advance payment, advance payment guarantees, performance guarantees. Usually, uh, some of the Hungarian commercial banks are also able to provide uh, some of these guarantees, but uh, if uh, for any reason they are not ready to take the risk, then it can be Exim uh, who you may contact. Uh, and just some slides back regarding the main conditions of, uh, of a buyer's credit. I already mentioned that at least 15% prepayment should be made by the Indian company. Uh, we can finance up to 85% of the commercial contract. The repayment period can be maximum 10 years, uh, between 2 years and 10 years. Basically, the repayment should be made uh, quarterly or semi-annually. The interest rate is fixed. Uh, for the entire period. I will show you the interest rates a little bit later. Uh, the local cost uh, cannot be more than 30% of the export value. It means that, uh, for example, if a uh, uh, diary factory is uh, put into operation in India, then most of the equipments should be exported from Hungary, but obviously there are some fieldworks uh, in the country, uh, and these local works, uh, local equipments, cannot reach this 30% limit. Uh, the interest rates are extremely favorable nowadays, especially in Euro. Uh, up to 5 years it's 0.89%, uh, between 5 years and 8.5 years it's 0.95%, and over 8.5 uh, years it's 1.14%, slightly higher in uh, US dollars, but I think it's still favorable, especially that the interest rate is fixed for the entire period. Besides this interest rate, there's a risk premium uh, with which we cover the risk uh, of the deal. It depends on the country, on the debtor, if it's a state-owned company, if it's, a, if it's a company listed on the stock exchange, it's obviously lower. Uh, it can be a bank, uh, it's obviously lower, but if it's a, if it's a, a normal <coughs> Indian SME, it can be higher, but I think all in all, the interest rate in Euro for uh, 10 years uh, wouldn't reach 3, 3.5%. Uh, obviously, it's very difficult to run the risk uh, of an Indian SME or to judge the risk of an Indian SME from Hungary. That's why we try to use, with uh, try to work with local commercial banks. Uh, if there would be 
uh, much more export activities than it is now. Uh, we could easily contact uh, local commercial banks and provide refinancing for Indian banks who are there in the country and who are in a position uh, to judge the, the risk uh, of a certain SME. In this case, we are of course running the risk of the commercial banks. Uh, we are just uh, providing the cheap refinancing uh, that can be used to finance Indian SMEs who are actually exporting uh, from the country. Uh, it's very important that uh, we can only provide financing uh, or insurance if there is a certain Hungarian contact in the deal. Uh, in case of uh, supply of goods, at least 50% uh, of the goods transported should be Hungarian origin. It means that uh, if there is a company in Hungary with a German parent and uh, the Hungarian company is exporting goods from Hungary and also from Germany, let's say to India, 95% uh, of the commercial project can be German origin, but at least 51% should be Hungarian originated. It's very important that in case of construction and installation, at least 25% uh, of the entire export project should be Hungarian originated. Uh, it's not enough if uh, Hungarian uh, main contractor purchasing machinery from Germany and uh, shift it through Hungary to India. It should be made in Hungary uh, and uh, usually the Hungarian Chamber of Commerce should issue a certificate of residency proving that this actual machinery was made in Hungary. Our expectation is uh, slightly higher than this 25%, it's, it's uh, around 50%, uh, but uh, between 25 and 50, we are we are happy to review the deal. Uh, that's the kind of transaction where I mentioned that the local contact, the India contact, shouldn't reach uh, 30 percent. In case of services, I think it's not relevant. But uh, 50 percent of the employees should be uh, employed in Hungary. It's probably more interesting for Hungarian companies who are providing services, say a lorry company or a transporting company. If they are using uh, Romanian drivers, then they are not able to. Uh, get financing or insurance if they are using Hungarian drivers than they do. Uh, I think this is what I would like to mention briefly. Uh, if anyone has any questions that uh, I didn't answer or anyone is uh, dealing with any Indian uh, buyers, then please uh, contact us at Exim. Uh, my email address is my name. It's S Z O C S G A B O R X in H U. You also uh, have four phone numbers here, so please uh, contact us if you have any questions. Even if you are in the first phase of, a, of an export activity, sometimes it's very useful to get all the information before you actually go uh, to the details and you try you you, you go to the direction. Thank you very much, again. the Chamber of Commerce and all other dignitaries of India and you can get all the presentations. Personally would like to I would like to thank all of you, especially the Embassy Vijay Kapuria for inviting us to give us this presentation. The Honorable Minister who spoke about Upper Matthias who not helped us is not here but I would like to be conveyed to him that it was his effort that has brought us here and we are here in front of him. I'll just give a brief presentation of about our company, Aparota in India, and what we are planning to do here. And we will follow it up with a small AV of what we have produced which shows the spirit of Aparota. is at a glass. Uh, we'll just give you about the corporate uh, uh, presentation of Aparota. And then we'll talk about uh, the material experience and what we plan to do here and our key success factors. We, we, there was, a, there was a, a second stint of coming here six, seven months back. The, there was a lot of competition between a few of the countries in Europe, but ultimately we chose Hungary because of the district advantages uh, in Hungary and we wish this country and this kind of trade and commerce. Uh, Aparotides were established in 1972, <coughs> and have got 
Section 8, fact, 7, fact limits of 8.7 South Korea all around the world. We have turnovers of 2.2 billion of products are available in the more than 100 countries, 16,000 employees. And we have four manufacturing facilities in Asia, one in Europe, and two more are our subsidiaries. <laughs> We have our financial performance. You see, we have been one of the most profitable companies in India and Europe. And the year financial year, 14, 15, that probably the 16 million, 166 million dollars of net profit. Uh, it's an Indian, typically an Indian multinational. The, the chance to receive of putting it here is that you see that. We really have in our management board a wide spectrum of personnel from the US, from Europe, and from India, and other countries. And uh, it has been pioneered by our chairman, Mr. Onkar S. Khandran, and our vice chairman, Mr. Sadeem Group. Our beliefs are uh, Apollo ties, like many of the good Indian companies, believe have a set of values and vision. And our main values which we are going to inculcate in Hungary in true spirit would be customer first, business ethics, care for society, empowerment. The Apollo One family and the Apollo Way are, are quite significantly uh, important for Apollo. Uh, we make products only as an incident, but more important is we want to take care of people and we want to project as, as one, of the greatest, one of the biggest cultural ambassadors. So the brands and the products that we make, we have the Apollo brand, the Red Stream brand, the Regal brand and other brands. We make a, a complete set of products, <coughs> every product line which we will be making here will be the 2 3 wheeler motorcycle and scooter tires which we are planning to do in India from this year. The, uh, if you see, we, we are leaders in the passenger car segment. And the truck radials, we produce more than 2 million truck radial tires in India along with 3 million bias radial bias tires and we are uh, unmistakably the biggest producers of truck radial tires in India in a single plant in Chennai. And this plant in Chennai was, is the most environmental plant that we put in 2009 to 2011 and we could put that in 15 months flat, the production came out. And we have to take a little longer, but we'll be here very soon. Our partners, we are global suppliers to most of the OEs in the world. We really see there's a lot of synergy between this and the European OEs. And our products are going to be world class to, to produce the same type of tires for the European market, used by the, the, the real big OEs. Now we come to the, the real story. Uh, our plant is coming up in Dengesh Halas, which is about 78 kilometers northeast, back on, on M3 road. And uh, we are all going to, uh, I have brought my senior colleagues along with me, and we are going to stay back for lunch. I will not bore you with a long presentation, but anybody who would like to do business with us, to have a relationship with us, are welcome. We are willing to answer all the questions and interact with all of them. You see, we are, uh, the plot size is about 72 uh, hectares, and uh, we are going to make 5.5 million passenger car tires, 675,000 uh, uh, truck radial tires, and the first phase of the covered area will be 150,000 square meters. This is obviously not covering only 30% of the area that has been provided to us. So it is, uh, we are here to stay for many, many years to come. And uh, we have just started our ground uh, uh, jobs, the earthwork, and we expect that the first tires, the first world class tires, will roll out during the first quarter of 2017. Uh, I will not go too much into the success factors of that technology and process. Uh, that, that could be uh, reserved for another seminar, but needless to say that. This will be one of the most sophisticated uh, plants in Europe, competing with the best of the best here. And uh, we would like to uh, showcase our products and our services 
so that they are put at par with any of the best manufacturers in Europe. That will be our attempt. As I was telling you, uh, Apollo uh, put a lot of emphasis on human resources and corporate social responsibilities. And this has been our first intent here. And a few next few slides will tell us what exactly we are going to plan here and what the work has already started. Uh, we have a, a very unique uh, internationalized uh, one family culture. Uh, whoever we take, we do not take them as blue collar or white collar or, or grey collar. That's, that terminology do not exist in Apollo. For example, in our Chennai plant, all the people who have been taken are just team members. They have the same uh, color of uniform, they, they, are, they are paid the same manner, and they are all diploma holders and up. We do not have any. And then obviously there is no union and there are no problems with the people and, and whatever we, the people need, we proactively provide right from the beginning. And that would be uh, our main aim here, that we, we take in on the, the best of the, uh, the technicians, the young boys, train them in our factories around the world and bring them here so that they belong to us and they own the, the plant and the equipment. We have a, a unique uh, people oriented and self-managed team approach. The self-managed teams, what we have is in, in, the, in the radial plant in Baroda as well as in Chennai, uh, is that it's a very, very flat structure. We do not have uh, any difference between layers. And these are factories which have no supervisors. Uh, the entire plant is run by the team members themselves. We only have the, the production personnel are only quality managers and enablers. So there is nothing like a production manager, etc. in our setup. They are all working together. And uh, you would be uh, happy to hear that we, my, my colleagues, uh, my HR colleagues and my manufacturing and project heads, our endeavor to really do this. And for several years now, we are, Apollo has been winning the best place to work awards in India and in Europe, and it will be our aim to repeat it here. <coughs> So I was telling you in Genjo Shalas, we are going to have employ employee empowerment, self-development, and the last one is very important. 90% of the employees are going to be taken in and around Genjo Shalas only, around 80 kilometers radius. We are not going to bring too many people from India or elsewhere. It is going to be an Hungarian company, with a unique culture being brought from India, owned by the people of, of Hungary. Uh, we have already started our recruitment process. Uh, with, uh, yesterday there was the function where we handed over 100 scholarships to people who are still studying in eight technical institutes in and around Jinjo Shalas. We have taken them and they are going to be in our rooms even in the last four months of studies. And we are going to give them special training in language and in other social responsibilities, etc. And in the coming in the month of July, we are going to send them all to Netherlands or to India for a six month training. So all this needs a tremendous amount of effort and coordination and help from the, all the people here. And I would really like to solicit and request for that help. Corporate social <coughs> responsibilities, uh, our, this has been one of the keys of Apollo If you really see uh, if you see the, all the uh, uh, all the awards what we have won, we have. Uh, I'll go to the next slide on this. You would find that we have been competing with the best of the best and coming out successful. We have been ranked number one in auto ancillary industries. In the auto industry, along with Tata and Mahindra and Maruti, we are at the top three in terms of the corporate social responsibility. Uh, what we carry, we carry out as a corporate culture and we would like to completely duplicate that here as well. So what we are trying to do is not to just to make tires and produce and make profits. Along with that, we would also like the unique culture of, uh, of, of Apollo in Hungary to be developed. These are some of the activities uh, what we focus in India. And the same, uh, we have already got in touch with uh, several agencies here. We are doing a survey in and around uh, the <coughs> town of Ginger, Ginger Shalas, and depending on the need, we are going to deliver the right type of CSR exercises for the local villages and the population at large. 
today if you see that a tile industry is typically uh, an industry which, which needs to be environment friendly and we are going to concentrate totally on all the matters of energy conservation and uh, zero pollution, complete uh, satisfaction of health and safety in environment. So all the successes, this is a summary of the thing, what we have told, and I'd like to thank you. If you have one more minute, Kishukuma, can you put that in? It's a small, uh, this thing which shows about the, about the Go the Distance campaign of Apollo Tires, where with Manchester United and in UK, we work on, on using the old Trafford pitch, the ground, it's, the layer is made from used tires. This is not only, this is an actual CSR exercise, an environmental exercise in practice. We are trying to play it, I hope it runs well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Prabhakar and Mr. Kumar. This was really inspiring. Apollo has already raised the profile of India here in Hungary and uh, we show that uh, it would inspire many more companies to come here from India and would raise uh, bilateral economic and commercial linkages. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Mr. Dilt Joseph Farkash and he would uh, uh, tell us about the possibilities of further collaboration in the tourism sector. Mr. Farkash. Maniya Shri Rajuji, Maniya Bharati Amitro, Mary Angrezi Kafi Buri, I have so skipped it. लेकिन इसके लिए मैं मेरे स्पीच हंगारे में दे दूंगा माफ कीजिए मैं आप बंद करते हैं और वैसे तो मुझे अली जोत्रा सिंह ही पसंद है इसलिए इस इंडिया ही पर आप इन नव में कुछ नहीं तो मुझे ऐसे ही किस रूप में किस कोई मज़ा रूप में मज़े दे रहा है वेगी मंदनी Hát miután én vagyok az utolsó műsorszám, igyekszem összekapni és rövidre fogni. Egy kérdésem van, aki még nem járt Indiában, tegye fel a kezét, legyen szíves. Legfőbb ideje elmenni. Ez szép. Ez nem, illetve nem szép, mert, mert ugye, ha az ember kereskedik, akkor ismerje a helyet jól, kezdet közelről, test közelből, ami, amivel <coughs> dolgoznia kell. Indiáról, aki többször jártott, az is egyre kevesebbet mer elmondani. Én 1973-ban voltam ott először, mint újságíró, és azóta is gyakran előfordul, de mindig 5-10 napra, tehát nincs indiai állandó tapasztalatom. Minden esetre van egy ilyen jópofa mondás, hogy aki egy hetet töltött Indiában, az okvetlenül könyvet akar írni róla, mert annyi a benyomása. Aki egy hónapot töltött, 
az egy újságszínben gondolkodik, hogy mit kéne. És aki egy évet töltött, az megállapítja, hogy sejtelme sincs erről az országról, és legjobban nem ír semmit. Így aztán, amikor én ezt a vicces történetet elmondtam Ralph Christian Atlaninak, az indiai Janata kormány belügyminiszterének, régi ismerősemnek, azt mondta, hogy én 86 éves vagyok. Képzeljék el, hogy én mennyi minden nem tudok. Úgyhogy valóban ez lehet humorkodni rajta, de tény, hogy hogy mennyi inkább belemászik az ember Indiába minden vonatkozásban, annál inkább elbizonytalanodik. Ami biztos, hogy ha jó üzletet köt, az sikerülni fog. Ehhez egyébként sok sikert kívánok és jó szerencsét. Most azt mondanám még el, személyes tapasztalataimat fogom pár mondatban, mert azért Indiának utána lehet olvasni, utána lehet nézni, és rendkívül hasznos előadások hallottak el itt. Ez egyszerűen olyan sok információ volt, ami, ami pótolhatatlan, mert szakemberek csinálták. Egyáltalán Indiába eljutni, az drága. Repülő sokba kerül. De ha már ott van az ember, akkor viszonylag olcsón megúszta, és sok érdekességet lát magad el pénzért. Ezért én javaslom, hogy ha valaki kiküldésbe megy, kiküldetésbe, vagy pláne kihelyezésbe, akkor rokonságát mindenképpen hívja ki, és hagy nézzék meg ők is ezt a csodálatos szép országot. Márciustól, októbertől márciusig az a turizmus számára a optimális időszak, utána elkezdődik a száraz évszak, rendkívül meleg, utána elkezdődik a vesős évszak, rendkívül vizes. Tehát ősztől úgy szeptembertől, októbertől már el lehet kezdeni a fölkészülést. A fölkészülés egyébként vízumot kell váltani, többször hallottuk, hogy ez ennyi egyszerűbbé vált az utóbbi időben. Nagyon helyes. Tehát ha az ember saját magának állítja össze az úti tervet, az se kizárt, nem fontos, hogy okvetnek utazási irodával menni, mert az a kényelmesebb nyilvánvalóan. De például az én fiam egy barátjával kiment Maszek alapon Indiába, összeállították az úti tervet, megváltották a repülőjét, innen interneten béreltek szállodákat maguknak, amelyre jártak, és voltak Delhi-ben, Arany háromszögben, tehát Hagra Csajkur környékén, majd elmentek Benárezbe, Varárasziba, ahol a Ganges folyó, és látták is az összes ott történő eseményeket, majd ők elrepültek még Nepálba is, és úgy jöttek haza. Az indiai utazásnál, aki megteheti, jól teszi összekombinálja egy nepáli vagy egy irankai úttal, ami már közel van, és úgy már még inkább megéri a látogatást. India nagy ország. Három milliók, majdnem 300 ezer nézetkilométer. Ez akkora, mint Európa a volt Szovjetunió nélkül. És hogy nem várjuk el, hogy egy svéd tudjon portugálul, ugyanúgy Indiában se csoda, hogy mondjuk egy észak-indiai, egy hindiú beszélő, vagy egy bengáli beszélő, nem tud tamilul, ami már dél indiai, és teljesen más nyelvcsalád. Indiában van 15 körül nagy nyelvek száma, és megszámálhatat a kis nyelv, meg nyelvcsalás. Szerencsére ott az angol nyelv. Az angol a gyarmati idők hagyománya, de ezt általában az indiai is elismerik, mint jó hagyományt, mert ez a tarka országot, a nyelvileg tarka országot, tulajdonképpen össze tudja kapcsolni, és egymást az emberek így megértik. A hindinek volt egy időben erőszakos terjesztési kísérlete, ez volt, amikor a Indira Gandhi fia Sanjay Gandhi volt az illetékes miniszter vagy, vagy fődiszvizselő a kormányban, de akkor az ország elutasította ezt a módszert. India is not India kiabálták az emberek az utcán, és visszakoztak a hatalmon lévők. Amit ő nekik akkor nem sikerült elvégezni, azt elvégezte az indiai film, különös tekintettel a Bombay filmstúdióra, a Bollywoodra, 
amelyről így többször szó esett, már Budapesten is sokat forgattak, nem sokat, de forgattak néhány nagy filmet, és így aztán ez, ezt a filmet az egész országban nézik, ami a Hollywoodon készül, és ha másképp nem, de passzívan, mindenképpen elsajátítják így a hindi nyelvet is. Más nyelveken is készülnek filmek Indiában, Madrasban, Kalkultában és így tovább. Na de ez részletkérdés. A másik fontos adat, hogy Indiában, az indiai barátaink jobban tudják, hogy aktuálisan hány ember él, de pontosan, pontosan ezt senki nem tudja megmondani, mert 1 milliárd 200 millió közül van. Hát nem ütköznek mindig egymással, de ez a pusztaságban, a sivatagban történik, másod tömegek vannak. Különös tekintettel Kalkutára, amelyeket az angolok annak idején fővárosnak szántak, még a brit irodalom idején, és olyan két millió emberre tervezték. Most akik benne olyan 15-20 millió között valahol, tényleg nem lehet az utcán gyakorlatilag közlekedni, kivéve a Majdan környékét, ahol viszont trinkerpályák is vannak. Egy ottani anekdóta, ha valaki nem hallotta volna, hogy áll egy európai az utca első egyik oldalán, és előtte a főút vonalon közlekedik Ázsia. Tevék, tehenek, szamarak, teherautók, személyautók, riksák és mindenki. Nem tud átmenni. Egyszer észrevez a másik oldalon egy másik európai kinézetű férfiút, és átkiabál neki, hogy Uram, maga hogy került oda? Mert visszakiabál, én itt születtem. Ez <gül> sem <gül> jellemző arra, hogy, hogy sok ember van. Ott tényleg nagyon sok, ott nem lehet mozogni. Mások már keresek. Volt egy ellenkező tapasztalatom is, nyártomban keltem be, amikor 1984-ben a testőrei merényletet követtek el és megölték Indira Gandhi, akkor Elhiben kiárási tilalmat léptettek életbe. Na, az azt jelentette, hogy, hogy nem voltak emberek az utcán. Hát, itt nem hogy a reszelő zsír, szóval teljesen fölfoghatatlan volt, de mi legalább tudtuk, hogy nem nincsenek emberek az utcán, kivéve a katonákat, akik úgy 50 méterenként álltak föltűzött szuronyjal. De a tehenek, a szent tehenek, meg a kóborkutyák nem tudták, hogy miért van ez, hogy üres a város. Hát ilyet nem volt, ilyet még nem láttak. Úgyhogy összebújtak az utca sarkára a kutyák például, és hangosan nyűszíteni, meg bonyítani kezdtek, mert fölfoghatatlan volt a számukra az adó szituáció. Úgyhogy ez volt a két szélsőség, amit én a népességgel kapcsolatban észrevettem. Említettem a hindit, ami ha valaki tud, az jó, ha nem tud, az se nagy tragédia, mert angolul valóban el lehet mindenkivel boldogulni, legalábbis bizonyos szint fölött. De elég, elég alacsonyan van ez a szint, tehát tanulják iskolába mindenütt, úgyhogy ha csak angolul tud valaki, Indiában megél. Az angol, mint már említettem, a gyarmatosítás egyik hasznos öröksége, gyarmati időké, a másik a kriket, a harmadik a viszki. Ezek pozitív dolgok, aztán amúgy, aki akar, az még örökölhet onnan. Az indiai pénzem a rúpia, mint önök is tudják, én most nem is tudom, mi az aránya, de olyan hat körül van a forinthoz képest. Volt legalábbis pár éve, és ezért az alkú az kötelező, mint valahol az ember előfordul, és vásárolni akar különösen. Na most ott jó, ha valami pár mondatot bemagol indiül, mert amikor már minden érvet elmondta, hogy miért kell neki volt sokan az adott áru, akkor előjön a hindi mondataival, és azt mondja, hogy maga, mit tudom én, nem akarja ideadni, de nem akarja elengedni azt a vaszat 50 rupiát, én meg lám még a maguk nyelvét is megtudom. Kitör a pánik, tudni, hogy nem tudják, hogy előtte mit cselektek ők egymás között, és én abból mit értettem. Villágyorsan elengedik, odaadják, menjek is le Ilyen szempontból ez hasznos dolog a nyelvtudás hatalom Akkor 
tudni kell az, hogy előfordul, nem is ritkán, hogy a külföldieknek más árat mondanak, mint a hazaiaknak, és ez hivatalosan is így van. Mondok egy példát, Delhi-ben ott van a Kutub Minár, a nagy minaret, amelyek mellé áll, mellette áll ez a bizonyos nem rosszásodó vasoszlop, amelyik 100%-os, illetve 99%-os vasból készült. Oda természetesen egy idegenforgalmi mágnes. Oda megy az ember, és belépőjegyet kell váltani. A belépőjegy indiaiaknak 10 rupia, legalábbis amit én ott voltam, ennyi volt. A külföldieknek 250 rupia. Na most ez azért 25 szeretem, ez meg az ember eltöpreni rajta, hogy vajon miért. És indiai tudás, vagy hindi tudás, vagy romjai felhasználva, mondtam a fordva a pénzáros gyerekeknek, ott álltak kívül is, belül is, a marszon a férfiak, mondtam nekik, hogy Mujje Ektikat, Dasrupa Ekerie, Vigye, Mén Bárat Ilyen vagyis adjon nekem 10 rupiáért egy egyet, én indiai vagyok. Néztek rá megmerevedve, közben, Nahin, Száv, Ábrát, Ilyen Nahin, nem uram, ön nem indiai. Mondom, még húzza rúr, de igenis az vagyok. Hát elvidatkoztunk, és akkor eszembe jutott a Csavargó című indiai klasszikus film, ami az 50-es években készült, Rács Kapur volt a főszereplője, és a világszerte nagy sikert aratott. És Raska Buna volt benne egy dala, egy ének, amelyik körülbelül arról szólt, hogy a, a ruhám az angol, az ingem az kínai, a szípőm japán, de a szívem indiai. Az utolsó két sorra emlékeztem, és akkor oda vártam a fiúknak, hogy Béri Csunke, Hén Csapáni, Réki Nil, meg Indusztáni. Óriási siker volt, nem mondom, akkor 10 rupiáért kérem helyet, nem uram, készed ötve. Hát akkor mit volt, mondom, hát miért? Hát most bizonyítottam minden módon, hogy én mennyire indiai, mennyire indiai vagyok. És mondták, hogy igen, mi akár elég készült, de ott van a következő őrjára, és azok föl fogják magukat tartózhat, és te megjelent. Így hát én is letárkáltam a 250-et, és megtekintettem az emlékműrendszer. Indiában sok lehetősége van a turizmus, turistának kapcsolatot tartani a hazával. Annak idején, amikor először voltam, persze ilyen nem volt, de most már úton útféle van egy internetkafék, amik egészen nem odaillő környezetben találhatók és működnek, és le lehet adni az az anyagot. Szállodákban természetesen vannak. Telefon, mobiltelefon kapcsolat van, én nekem Pannonon van, vagy most már mi is ez a, tehát a buszas, az ott működik, tehát van ilyen rendszer, lehet vele szórakozni. Úgyhogy a taxiról talán annyit, hogy jó, működik, meg van akinek nincs annyi pénze, ez se drága egyébként, nincs annyi pénze, az riksával, mehet egy három kerekű kis motor, és ha nem frászol be, akkor nagyon szépen eljut azzal is mindenhova, ugyanis az indiai közlekedés ugye először is baloldali. Másodszor is ez többnyire Delhi-ben, az új Delhi-ben érvényes, ahol a út nagy ilyen beton ö, kis töltése vannak, elválasztva a két utca, a utca két fele, ott nem lehet előzni, másod mindenki úgy megy, ahol éppen helye van, megy elő. És vannak ezek a sosok körforgalom, ott van az emberek, az ilyen taxik, kocsik, biciklik és amit akarunk, beleszáguldanak, és ezek többségében szépen ki is jönnek belőle, nagyon jó csodálatúra, akik rémült nem figyeltek ezt a közlekedési kavalkádot. No, a másik az, hogy hintén idegen forgalomról, turizmusról van szó, hintén intenzíven épülnek az autópályák, és ez, ez hasznos dolog végül, és ekkor a országban az a csoda, hogy eddig ez a viszonylag út láttam én, hogy el volt hanyagolva. Ezzel együtt azt nem javaslom, hogy aki egy pár napra megy és nem nincs tartós kiküldetésben, ami azt jelenti, hogy évekig az ott elkezdjen közlekedni, mert autóban, ugye a jobboldali kormányán, meg a helyi körülmények között 
nincs operelősi kereítélve. Motorbiciklivel inkább lehet, mert az végén is ott van a feje a sofőrnek a kormány és a kocsi, vagy a jármű, tehát az működik. Én láttam olyat Darcsilingben, hogy két osztrák motorokkal mozgott a Himalájában, és csodálkozva megkérdeztem tőlük, hogy ez hogy jött össze. Mondták, hogy a motor föladták Európában hajóra, az kioszták bombéba, és amikor már úgy volt, hogy már akkor kint van, értesítették őket, hogy akkor felszállt a tepülőre, eljöttek bombéba, és körbe motorozták Indiát. Tehát ilyen kaland végül is elképzelhető. Most a városokról sokat én nem akarok mondani, mert aki megy, majd megtalálja, de mindenképpen Delhi környékén, a Delhi-ben magában rendkívül sok érdekesség van, és az ember természetesen kígyó bűvölök és mindenféle ilyen varázsok azért megkörjékezik. Egyszer volt egy olyan kalandom, hogy egy kígyó bűvölőtől, mint tévés voltam, akkor fel akartuk venni a zenéjét, amit játszik a fülújáját. És akkor a Mókus mondta, hogy hát igen, eljátszott a kígyó, ugye már unalomig ismer, és mondta, hogy hát egy rupiát, ha lehetne az életi a produkcióért. Jó, mondta, tessék odattam. Majd azt mondta, mint én ezt maglóra vettem föl, hogy de szeretné ő visszahallani, amit, amit lejátszott, mert ő még sose hallotta, ha azt visszamondom. Háj, semmi gond, visszatörgetem a magnón, és lejátszottam neki, amit roppant élvezett. Mondok, egy rúgni a ször. Ami mondta, hogy bevicces a fehér rúgni. Ez a Na, tehát még annyit mondanék gyorsan el, hogy külön rendkívül sok érdekesség van természetesen. Goa, Kerala, az turizmusra ki van találva, és más efélék. De amiért én egyszer turistaként voltam kint, az az India, India Travel szervezze, mégpedig azok Frankfurtban székelek, ők az Európai Központja ennek. És kiírtak egy pályázatot magyar újságíróknak, hogy hogy lehetne több magyar Indiába csábítani, mert zavarta őket, hogy a magyarok elrepülnek India fölött, meg se állnak Tajföldig. Na most akkor én írtam a pályázatban, hogy Indiában sok, viszonylag sok magyar vonatkozású emlék is van, amit ők nyilvánvalóan nem tartanak számon, nálunk meg nem hirdetik. Hát Delhi-ben a Modern Művészetek Múzeumnakban három terem csak Amrita Sergil képeivel van berendezve, aki félig magyar, félig indiai festőnő volt, nagyon tartják Indiában, Bakta Jervin unok a húga volt. Vagy indiai történet, nem tudja, egy nemzeti múzeumban valószínűleg, ott van például egy terem, a közép gyűjtemény, amit Stein Aurél adományozott saját gyűjtéséből a múzeumnak, és büszkén feszítünk, mert ott van Stein Aurél képe, és a köszönő sorok, hogy ezt ők kapták. Körösi csomáról nem is beszélek, mert ismert emberünk, leginkább a kapcsolatunk Indiával, de az ember Kalkuttában van, akkor a, a bengáliai ázsiai intézetnek a épületében, ez még 19. századi, megtalálja az ő szobáját is, ami emlékszobának van berendezve, és a lépcső átban mellszobra van. És ott van Darcsering, ugye, ahol a sírja van, és érdemes fölmenni, ha az ember valami jó szállódott kifog, akkor úgy érzi magát, mint az egykori angol ura, nézi a hegyeket, kimalálja a csúcsait, a 8000-eket, és nem messze ott van földink, külösi csoma. Kérem szépen, emellett a hagyományos dolgok mellett rengeteg újszerű dolog van Indiában, vadvízi evezés, zene, ének, tánztanulás, ajurvédikus ismeretek, ha valaki nem a rinszúrnál kívánja ezeket bővíteni, és jó a vallás, Megérzem, Balássán, itt Magyarországon, az Szeged mellett van nem messze, működik egy indiai asrám, aminek a főnöke, vagy vezérpapja, bizonyos Haridzsán, Moszkabni fedő nevén úr, az szervez utakat Indiába, hogy minden negyedébe egyetek vár. Na és akkor vízérvétel, a vízérvétel, és már említettem, indiai konyha, aminek különösen a vegetariánus részét nagyon érdemes megkóstolni, mert olyan jól csinálják, hogy az ember nem is tudja, hogy vegetariánus. 
és hát ezt persze Magyarországon is meg lehet csinálni, mondjuk az emberi Budapesten is több hasznos tátogatást tervezményben, mint ahogy mi is most az előadások után azt hiszem, hogy a Sali már étteremnek fogjuk az áldásait érvezni itt a követségen, de ennek a bejelentése nem az én feladatom. Köszönöm szépen a kedves figyelmüket, és hogyha még a remény alatt vagy később valakinek valami kérdés van, szívesen válaszolok. Thank you very much, Mr. Farkash. Uh, I'm sure with your experiences, more and more people would like to go to India and see for themselves. I, however, I would like to warn that they may not see now the snake charmers because Indians, as it is said, now play with the mouses. <laughs> and to those of you who wish to have a crash course uh, in Hindi through the Bollywood, they're most welcome to come to this very cultural center because every 15 days we have a Hindi movie played here. Uh, thank you very much. It has been a long session. If there are any questions, you may kindly raise your hands because we have the panelists with us still. Uh, even if you wish to ask in Hungarian language, this is perfect. We can have a simultaneous translation. Uh, I think there are no questions. Excellency Ambassador, uh, if I may kindly request you to kindly sum up uh, the discussions and give your closing remarks. Uh, Ambassador Mala Mishra, thank you. I'm sure all of you are feeling very hungry, so am I. <laughs> I will not deprive you any longer from the food, but before we go to that food, let me also give you some food for your thought, what has come out from this uh, seminar, which I personally feel has been a very important uh, event for us in the, in the embassy. Uh, we got the views of uh, very diverse uh, organizations, institutions, individuals, companies, uh, uh, tourism, many facets were discussed in today's event. I think we got a whole lot of things today, a big package for all of us. But what is important is the changes, the changes on both sides, the changes in the attitudes of trading with India, what the National Trading Company was telling, the Exim Bank, how the Exim Bank will support trade, exports, investments, which is uh, which were not known to us before. If we can use these agencies properly, I am sure our uh, trade will show a remarkable uh, increase, which we need. The minister was just telling about his observations that trade has been lagging behind. Those were my observations also, that trade is indeed lagging behind. And there is no reason why it should, if bodies like Exim Bank can come forward and help the people, the Hungarian exporters, to look at Indian market or go in India, develop a partnership with an Indian party and make something in India. So my proposal to you is the following. We are going to have a big delegation in June, in the month of June. Please note down, all of you will get a kind of an intimation about this delegation who is coming from India. It's a, it's a multi-sectoral delegation which will be led by the Confederation of Indian Industry, which is something like equivalent of what you are doing there, here. Uh, we also have about uh, 10,000 members in this body. It's not FIKI, it is another body, uh, which is another big industry body called Confederation of Indian Industry. It is CII, FIKI is different. But CII is leading a team here to Hungary at our request that please come to Hungary because they come to other parts of Europe and they just go by Hungary and Hungary doesn't seem to come on their way. So we impress on them that please come to Hungary. There is a big possibility here of doing trade and business with Hungarians. The, the situation has changed a lot. You will get, you will get good business here. So we are going to have B2Bs and we will request the National Trading House who is mandated to, uh, to, to organize B2Bs uh, for helping us in this. We will organize with the National Trading House, we will organize with the HIPAA, 
who is with us today and of course we will take along Exim Bank which are the three very important agencies for us and we want to do it in a big way so that we get some actual outcome out of it. Today, if you have some time while you are having your food or thereafter, if you wish to register your sector, your particular sector, your uh, particular industry, what you represented or your business interests, what you represented, that will help us in advising the delegation in India to come prepared. That is, they will accordingly come with those sectors who can deal with you. For example, if you have B2Bs and you are all coming for the B2Bs, we want to match make. Perhaps this hall could be the matchmaking hall where we can engage your party with Indian party. And if there are 20 people or 15 people, each one can have a kind of a individual presentation for all of you here. So I think this is one outcome which comes out of this particular session. We have come to know the interest which you have in India. And India also has beginning to have a lot of interest in those regions where it had not looked properly before because of our constant efforts, our embassy's efforts, and also your embassy's efforts in, in Budapest. You are embassy is doing quite a bit, and now you got your consulate in Mumbai, consulate general. Now you're going to get your uh, trade office in, in Bangalore. So you have got these uh, agencies also in India, so which are playing an important role there. So together, let us dynamize our trade and business relationship. Let us use it to further, uh, you know, uh, move our uh, bilateral economic cooperation further. Of course, the minister talked about, somebody talked about passing through the EU route. EU route is fine. EU is a multilateral route. We believe in the EU route because EU is happens to be one of the biggest trade and investment partners of India in the world today. Uh, it used to be the largest. Today it is, I think, second or third. In, in that position. But apart from the EU, we want to bilaterally deal with countries which are important for us. And therefore, we do not want to go through the EU route to come to Hungary. We want to come to Hungary direct as Hungary is important for us, as the Hungarian market is important for us. We want to come here direct and do business with you directly. And there is no dearth of people from India who are interested in Hungary. I remember I was there myself when Prime Minister Orban was giving his, his speeches to uh, industry. He spoke to our industry in Delhi and also in Mumbai. And you won't imagine, there, there were at least 150 to 200 people in the hall. They were packed with Indian industry leaders. So obviously there is a lot of interest among the Indian people to come here. But not much is coming from that side, apart from Apollo which has come because Apollo had come before. Apollo is not a new company which is coming now. Apollo has come five years before and seen the place and gone back and come back again. So Apollo is a different case. We want new industries, new companies to come from India to here and set up greenfield companies. There are many uh, among you yourself. You will have many people who would like to partner with Indian companies today. Why? Because you have the skills. You have the innovation drive, you have the education, you have the multilinguistic uh, skills advantage. And what do we have? We have skills, we have technological gains, we have a skilled uh, uh, manpower factor, we have a huge market. So it is a big, you know, very important connection and above all the connection of two important uh, you know, societies, politically, I don't know if anybody mentioned, uh, we are the largest democracy in the world, everybody knows that. Our framework is a market democracy. It is completely different from any other uh, framework you have seen in the world where we are the largest liberal market democracy in the world. And we are liberal. I, I, I pride in saying that we are a liberal economy. And therefore, we have taken that route and that route is today paying dividend because we have got, as uh, Mr. Khandrija mentioned, he corrected me, maybe I stand to be corrected and if that is true, it is too good. Because if India notches a growth of 8% next year, isn't it good for all of us? 
Isn't it good for the world at large? Isn't it good for the Hungarian people to come to India, to look at India? Why should you overlook India? The minister was saying, uh, we have so far looked at China, Japan, Korea. Korea, with a population of what, 35 million people? We are a population of 1,030 million people. Look at the differences. Look at the market opportunities you are getting. So if you think about it, and we are there to support you, what we are telling all these efforts would would go in vain if we were not there we are here to support you and we have gathered all these people together all these agencies together to come and help us in doing that so all of you gentlemen and ladies please take benefit out of that so with these words i leave you and please have the rest of the session have a good hearty meeting and please keep in touch with us and now when you go out, if you have not registered with us, please register. Because we are going to increase our database. And as you know, our Prime Minister is very dynamic. You never know when he says, let me come to Hungary. One fine morning we may get an order, let me come to Hungary. So now we have to assemble the whole crowd of people to, to meet him or to interact with his uh, various bodies. So we want to prepare ourselves also. And please help us in doing that. So thank you very much.